Hey guys, so you know that I love the Dresden Files. Up, and Jesus f So yes, Gabe is here. He's visiting me in person and we decided, finally, finally it's been long enough, folks. Um, but yeah, we decided to record a little thing uh, about the Dresden Files because a few weeks ago, we had been talking about various uh, tattoo ideas. I think I had, I had texted you and said there was a, a mouse tattoo idea that I had. And I was like, oh, this would be super cool. And then you and I were talking about it later when we were playing video games or something. And Gabe had said, we should get a matching Dresden Files tattoo. And over the next few weeks, we came up with this whole design, uh, got it all figured out, and we went and uh, got tattooed. That's he came out here yeah. to uh, to go get tattooed with me. Um, this is a uh, you know several months ago. I or not even really several months ago, more like a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah. I I had gotten my uh, my cardinal tattoo, and I've been talking about it nonstop, and it's kind of become. Um, Spencer's new addiction. Yeah, or like maybe <laughs> maybe like a new hobby yeah, kind of. Yeah. Like I I don't know how many I want to get at this point, yeah. but it's it's definitely become like an interest of oh, mine, yeah. right? Totally, totally. Um, and so uh, so I think through talking about that a lot and just like talking about tattoos in general, yeah. we were like, let's let's and do I've, this thing. Yeah, and I've wanted I've wanted tattoos for a long time, and I've had different ideas of what you know what I would want and obviously the dress and files is very close to us. It's mm -hmm. like literally what started this entire podcast. So yeah. It's like, what a good idea. Yeah. Like, you know, figure and, that out. And, and that's what you, that's what you said when we were talking about it. You're like, you know, the, the Dresden files is this thing that means so much to yep. both of us because it's like one of the foundations of it our is, friendship. It is, yeah. It's you know? the foundation of our friendship. Not only that, but it's like my, and like it was literally the first I hadn't read books in a long time mm -hmm. before I met Spencer and I got onto the these audiobooks and it's changed my life for the better since I mean I haven't stopped reading uh, and before I probably hadn't read books or you know done any of that for years and years and years so it's mm -hmm. like just a really cool thing to to want to do every day yeah now that I've been doing it for sure for sure and uh, and yeah and the Dresden Files did kind of start this whole yeah uh podcast journey for us because like you said it's the first thing that really sparked this yep. desire between the two of us and to like camaraderie too you know it was yeah like, it was like something that we always wanted to talk about and yeah we would for hours dude that's again where the podcast came from yeah exactly so um so yeah we we thought you know if we're gonna get if we're gonna get a nerdy tattoo yep. it should be it's gotta it be something be that means files. more than anything else which yeah this this is it so, yeah. yeah so uh, so yeah, he came out here and got uh, pretty much his first tattoo. You have a little one on your finger. Yeah, it's no, we'll call it my first tattoo. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a whole it was a whole experience. Yeah, do you want to do you want to talk about like did it hurt or anything? Yeah, no, it was it was so so before I had come up here, Spencer was like he talked to the tattoo artist and he was trying to figure out like when when's a good time to come up and do it, right? Mm -hmm. And she's like, well. If you want to do it soon, there's this tattoo convention going on in town here. Yeah. And I'm going to have a booth there and we can set you up an appointment. And so we're like, all right, let's do it. Let's mm -hmm. figure it out. And so I didn't know what to think. Neither did Spencer going mm -hmm. into this thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was a full on tattoo convention, booths everywhere, people everywhere, you know, uh, different artists and different. I don't know. It was just it was. Yeah. It was pretty wild. It was pretty wild. There's a lot going on. Yeah. But our artist was super, super nice. She's awesome. And uh yeah, we got the stencil on and, and she started tattooing and it definitely hurt a little bit, but I learned to like kind of enjoy the pain, mm -hmm. you know, it was just something that was like, you know, just focus on it. It's not bad. Yeah. It's just there. Uh, it feels almost like it, it feels like you, you have to have the pain with it a little bit. Otherwise, cause like when, for me later on, she put on that numbing yeah. spray and when that was on, I was like, oh, that's a lot better because I don't feel the pain. But also, it doesn't feel like I'm yeah, getting a tattoo. I'm I like, if it's part of the experience. Yeah. It's definitely it's, part of the experience. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
so yeah, it was uh, it was really interesting. Did you guys talk the whole time yeah, while you're getting I tattooed? I would say the whole time, but mm-hmm. we definitely talked and I asked her questions about you know where tattooing. she's from yeah. and tattooing and how long she's owned her shop and stuff and this and that. And she, again, she's super nice. There were times though where I like I was trying to stay still. That's mm-hmm. it was difficult, so I would just go on my phone right and just relax and yeah do this. But then there was other times where I talked to her. So yeah, yeah, it was super super mellow. She was awesome. Yeah, she'd let me be quiet when I need to be quiet, and mm-hmm. she talked to me when I needed to talk. So yeah, yeah. that's super cool. That's super cool. Um, it, you you don't want to show yours off, right? I'm gonna I'm yeah, gonna show. I mine. don't want to show mine yet. I'm definitely okay. gonna show you guys, but I want to wait until because right now it's healing, right? There's mm-hmm. leakage, ink leakage everywhere. I just want it to look really nice and up close. So sure, I'm gonna wait. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys real quick uh, mine because um, I'm yeah I I think. I, just to just to show you guys the idea yeah, yeah. of what it was. So I got the uh, Dresden amulet uh, with the ruby in the center, and then I got the the quote, um, "Pain is." Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Here, do you want to? I forgot my own quote. <laughs> uh, Pain is for the living; only the dead don't feel it. Yeah. And uh, I got the chain, and it goes all the way around my arm which i think is is really cool yeah. it's like a band that goes all the way around my arm so i'm i'm super happy with it um when i when i go visit gabe in december i think we're gonna have another artist uh up there do some touch-ups and do some shading um because it definitely felt like our artist was on a bit of a time crunch yeah um which i probably would have liked to have probably understood better before yeah <laughs> going I think, in I think for that it was but just the problem with the with the convention going on right yeah it's like there's there's things going on there's like contests going on right behind us and other stuff and so it was definitely yeah. a stressful environment i'm sure for the artists as well mm. um so it could have been it could have been nicer maybe just at the shop yeah uh, but it yeah. is what it is it's done yeah. and i'm i'm happy like yeah. i said like they look great they, they look awesome it's a really yeah. good foundation it's something yeah. to start with yeah They're definitely not perfect but it's uh it's you know we can only go up from here. Yeah, and, and you know we were we were talking about it earlier, and the ta- tattoo, uh, especially his, is light enough to where any artist could take yeah. it to another level from there and do some uh, darker lines or some more shading or whatever. Like all, all the colors on it are are pretty light, um, and so it'll be pretty easy to. Uh, to do some texture and, and stuff with it. So we'll show that off when it's ready. Yep. Um, but the reason that we bring all this up is because uh, we were looking for quotes, right, from the Dresden Files, because our tattoos are pretty much the same. His is a little bit different. But um, we, you know, we have, we have the quote down here. Yep. And I was looking all week for my quote. I was bouncing around between literally all the books of the dresden files i think i listened to at least two hours of every single dresden files book this week and it just reminded me how many amazing moments are all throughout the series because i think you know as a reader uh of this series as a fan you get kind of hung up on your favorite books right you're like this like i remember all the parts from battleground yep. or like uh, like peace per- talks or skin game or yeah. yeah yeah and like for me it's like uh it's like proven guilty yeah. like proven guilty and white knight are yep. some of my favorites and i get really hung up on those books and i think the best moments are are from those books um but what i found this week was when i was going back and listening to some of the earlier books or some of the later books like skin game or whatever i was just like there are amazing moments yep throughout and this entire series yeah. like e- every book has at least one like every book like some are better than others but i would say every book has one of those moments that either hits you in the feels or you're just like that was just awesome yep. how that was done or maybe it's like a beautiful monologue that harry does like everything kind of has its own thing um and so i wanted to go book by book and just kind of talk about what some of our favorites are from the series as a whole yeah. and um you know look at look at some of our favorite scenes mm-hmm. 
And uh, sorry if the audio is a little bit weird. We're uh, we're sharing a mic, yeah. obviously, and we're in a big open living room. But uh, gosh, my dog keeps yeah. I don't think you're gonna here. avoid it. I know. He's gonna hang out. I know. Um, so Stormfront. I think the thing that I remember most from this book is when Harry meets Marcone for the first time, mm-hmm. and they share a soul gaze. And Harry says that Marcone has the soul of a tiger. Like he is just this relentless, but not cruel. Yeah. Like he, he just is what yep. he is. Yep. Like he's this, he's this animal that is fierce and, uh, unapologetic yep. and unforgiving, but it's but not also kind of like just in some ways. Yeah. But also yeah. kind of just yeah. like he doesn't, he doesn't like hurt people to yep, hurt people. Exactly. He just like is just doing business yeah, kind just of thing. business. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's a theme going on way later too. You know, he's always mm-hmm. Harry's always talking about how, you know, Marcone's sure he's this evil guy, but he's got some lines that he'll never cross. Mm-hmm. And for most, you know, underworld overlords, that's not a thing. Right. Exactly. What one thing I noticed this week when I was reading through a lot of these yeah. is that a lot of my favorite moments involve Marcone. Uh, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all. There's so many, yeah. so many good ones. Um, yeah, and then also kind of, kind of involving Marcone, but not really. Uh, I think, and you guys can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. It's either in this book or it's in Full Moon. I think it's in Stormfront where he goes to the Varsity to confront Marcone. I'm pretty sure it's in this book because I think Marcone's... Is the Varsity the, uh, the tennis club or whatever? Or like the... No, no. It's way before that. Oh. It's it's Marcone's like college age bar. Oh. It's like this bar that he has like at the very beginning and then he burns it down in the next couple books because oh, okay. Harry like trashes it and stuff oh, okay, and Marcone okay. collects the insurance money. Gotcha. Um, but... Uh, but I, God, I, I'm, I think it's in this book and Harry, uh, tracks down Marcone's thug and he's like, your buddy, uh, stole something of mine. It was like a piece of hair. And he's like, you know, I, I know what can happen with, with hair when somebody has it. And so I'm trying to get it back from your thug and he has no right to take this oh, and marcone's okay yeah 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 and marcone's like is that true spike yep. or whatever the dude's yep. name was and he's like no marcone i wouldn't lie to you and then marcone like basically kills him yep. like it's this whole thing um and so uh but it's when harry is leaving the varsity and he's having this moment of like i don't know what to do i feel so lost and he's just walking through nighttime chicago on his own and it's just like this rare um it's i wouldn't say one of the only ones we get in the series but it's a rare moment where harry is really contemplating his life and he's like am i doing okay like am i like at all of this like am i am i good at this like even and he's basically the inner monologue he's like talking to his dad Mm. and he kind of like envisions his dad yep. beside it beside him and like what yeah. his dad would say and uh it's just like this really solemn kind of sad moment um but uh yeah i i love i love that scene it's very um just one of the quieter scenes from the series yeah. where it's like it just it just feels good feels good um but then of course later on everything that happens at victor sells cabin victor sells, yeah for dude. sure that's crazy uh yeah, that, that entire sequence is nuts. Yeah, it's it's an entirely. I I think, I think even as fans, we tend to look at Stormfront and kind of, you know, yeah, push it I'm, to the I'm side. Of that I haven't Same. read Stormfront in a very long time. I would I would highly recommend. I know. I'm going now back after through. talking with you for yeah. these last couple minutes, I'm like, dude, I need to. Back. Yeah, I need to go through like the first three because I always start at like four. Right. When I reread it, which I know I shouldn't. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, super remembering good. Remembering Victor Sells, and the other thing I thought was cool about this is like, uh, something that we don't see a lot of is like magical drugs, right? That's yeah. Like the only time the that third we, eye, the third eye. Yeah. I thought that was a really interesting concept mm-hmm. to kind of mix alchemy and like street drugs mm-hmm. and make this crazy you know chemical yeah. warfare type drug i i wish that had come back later in the series yeah and maybe it, it will the but... potential like it you know that stuff could be could you know 
and the yeah. world, man. It's dangerous, yeah. dangerous stuff. Yeah, because I'm surprised it didn't make a bigger impact yeah. in the magic community. Yeah. And I'd be curious to, you know, if we get to talk to Jim Butcher someday, yep. I'd be curious to ask him, like, whatever happened to Third Eye? Because yeah. surely other people know how to make it. Yep. I'm sure Mark Cohen especially knows yep. how to make it now. Yep. So, I don't know. I'd be interested to find out what happens yeah. with that. Um, but I, I do love the scene where Harry is, uh, before all the crazy stuff happens, um, he's, Harry is just walking around the cabin at night. Nobody's there. And he's like checking like the trash can and he finds like a roll of, um, film and stuff like an empty film yeah. canister. And it's just this whole thing. And I, I love I love this scene because I think it would look so good in like a show or a movie. Just like I could, I can just picture the whole thing. And I think that's what Stormfront does, does so well is it really feels like it would be a perfect book to movie adaptation. Like I can see it in my head as like a perfect, um, and, and not all these books are like that. Like, I don't think, I don't think ghost story works as a movie. Yeah. I just don't. But Stormfront, it's so succinct and there's like big highs and big lows and it just hits all at the right moment. Um, but I love this more quiet scene where Harry is just kind of like walking around the cabin and he sees somebody uh, like leave a um, like run away and he leaves a roll of film and Harry's like, what's that? And that's where he first starts like catching on to some of these clues um, and then at the very end, when he's at the cabin, everything with the with Victor Sells is done. Victor Sells is dead and everything. Yeah. And Morgan um, is there because Harry's passed out from the smoke of the fire. Yeah. And he wakes up to Morgan giving him CPR oh, <laughs> to wake him up. I forgot about that. Yeah. Dang. And Morgan has to admit, it's almost like a shadow of what we see later yeah. in, a, in Turncoat, where Morgan's like, because the whole book, he's like pestering him. He's yep. like, I know you're a dark wizard, yep. all this stuff. And yep. at the end of the book, he's like, I don't think you're a dark wizard. I think you're just like in over your head. Yeah. And I think you're stupid yeah. with your power. And yeah. like, you should still be watched. Yeah. Um, and so it was like this little bit of coming, give. Yeah, coming from Morgan, though, mm-hmm. that's, that little bit of give is a big bit of give. Yep, yep. And this is also where we find out that Morgan is, um, he's not necessarily like after Dresden just because he wants to be mean. He like truly has yep. these like zealous yep. ideals because even at the end, uh, Harry asks him, he's like, so, you know, I was passed out. Why didn't you just kill me? And Morgan's like, because it would be wrong. Yeah. yeah. And Harry's like, what? I thought you just wanted me dead. And he's like, no, like I believe in these things and that's why I treat you the way I do. Yeah. Cause I honestly believe this yep. stuff. And, uh, and and Harry's like, okay. He's like, so you're like, if you stick to your ideals so strictly, you're gonna have to go to the council and tell them that I did a good thing, yeah. and that. And Morgan's like, that's true. Yeah, that's fair. You're gonna have to. And do so that. yeah, and so then he gets like the doom of Damocles lifted yeah. off him and stuff. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I Storm, need to go back. Yeah, I Storm back. Stormfront is a way, way, way better book uh, than I think even like us, the fans, yeah. give it credit for because I certainly, um, I certainly tend to push it to the side yeah. a lot. Um, now I'll have much less to say about Full Moon because <laughs> <Yeah>. I genuinely, <laughs> uh, I don't really like Full Moon that much. Um, it's probably. It's probably my least favorite Dresden book next to Ghost Story. I think Ghost Story's a great Dresden book. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I'm the one on the podcast that doesn't <laughs> like it. But uh Full Moon, it's just really hard to like remember anything yeah. from it. I remember a couple couple things, mm-hmm. I think. And that would be the uh and maybe I'm wrong with this, I'm pretty sure I'm right, but the Loop Guru, mm-hmm. they're they're at Harry's being held somewhere or Murph. Yeah, mm-hmm. right in jail, and Murphy shows oh. up, and then all of a sudden the loop grew attacks the the prison, right, mm-hmm. the jail. Yeah, and they're trying to convince either Rudolph or what I can't remember what that guy's name was. Uh, yeah, the guy that had like the touch, right, where you could tell if you're telling the truth or not. Ooh, I don't know if he was in the series oh. yet. Oh, maybe think, it's a later book. Yeah. Anyways, they were in the prison, mm-hmm. and the loop grew showed up, and nobody believed yeah. him, and all yeah. of a sudden they had to play 
damage control. And yeah, and this Lou Guru is just going wrecking wild everybody. in the in yeah. the prison and everything. Um, yeah, I like I like that scene. I like especially what we get from it later because we get a videotape of Karen yes. killing and the Lou Guru a couple yeah. times in the series. Yeah, and yeah. it's kind of used as like kind of evidence like a lot of up to this point uh, there was a lot of people that were told about the supernatural that didn't believe in the supernatural karen was even kind of one of them and this is really where she starts turning a corner and being like no that was yeah a fucking that was real yeah it's not something normal (laughs) yeah exactly yeah you can't exactly can't deny that and, and I then, oh oh sorry ahead. I was just I was just gonna say I think Rollins is in this one too I can't remember yeah, for sure but that wouldn't surprise me yeah and then the yeah. other thing I'll say about it too is we get to see these um these belts yes that are imbued with the power to turn somebody into a werewolf mm-hmm. I forget what they call them they, there's a special word for it yeah don't know what it is but I thought that was a pretty cool instance of magic that we only see once here yeah we don't see too many more like magical items that actively do something yeah. besides harry's like force rings yeah yeah um he's got stuff that helps or him I just channel mean, like, like transform yeah. change into something else right yeah 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 because yeah. yeah. they i mean they change into a wolf with all the wolf carnal desires and mm-hmm. hatred and you know whatever else a wolf feels hunger yeah. all that stuff which is interesting yeah it's like it's like really advanced magic yeah. and a... Did we ever figure out who they got him from i think was it a yeah it is uh oh god people are gonna crucify me yeah no it's okay Um, me too (laughs) it is it is a nemesis thing okay it it is involved in in nemesis um because that's something that comes up later in uh like proven guilty and cold days especially when when he's on the bridge talking with uh lily and she's like have you not noticed that everything's been going crazy? Like these random talking about yep, Victor raining cells. frogs. Yeah, she's like, it's been raining frogs and like these random two like bit, two bit sorcerers, sorcerers are just getting insanely powerful stuff. Yeah, yeah. like th- it's all happening for a reason. Yeah. And she mentions the FBI agents within that. Okay, yeah. And so we've been led to believe that it was an, a nemesis. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, the last thing I'll say about Full Moon is another Marcone moment. Mm-hmm. Um, pro- honestly, probably my favorite part of Full Moon yeah. is when Harry's working together with Marcone and they're like in the pit. And oh, yes. uh, Marcone is, I forget exactly how he gets there, but he's hanging upside down by a rope. Yeah. And he's like slowly spinning around and he can't. He can't like get up to like grab the rope. Yep. And Harry says that lightning quick, he drew a knife from his sleeve and threw it at yeah. the rope and cut himself down and like caught yeah. it. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. dude, he's awesome. That's Mark so Owen cool. Awesome, dude. Mark Owen's such a badass. Yeah. I, I would read, I would love to read the whole series for Mark Owen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Grave Peril. Grave Peril, um, I think used to be my favorite of the series like next to proven guilty yeah grave peril has just so many great moments i mean we get the iconic line uh holy shit heck hounds um (laughs) where uh michael michael's like telling him not to swear because he goes holy shit holy shit michael hellhounds and michael goes harry and he goes sorry sorry holy shit heck hounds (laughs) And, and michael's like oh my god yeah um but dude, I could literally just like list a million things from this book, like Susan getting turned at the party, uh, the whole like Bianca's party, all of that was just so yeah devastating in so many different ways. Is is uh is that where um Thomas's girl I Justine know, Justine is yeah. that where she's like locked up? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. When when Harry wakes back up, they're in like this laundry room. Yes, and she's like kind of crazy, but also like yeah. not yeah in some ways she's going like because she's away from thomas so she's going like super deranged yeah and uh and harry's like trying to piece together what's going on they've they've like captured him yep and yeah locked up with justine yeah like in chains back there Yeah. yeah and he sees something in the corner and he's like what's this and justine's like don't go over there you're not gonna like it yep and he goes into the corner and it's susan yeah. and she is now a half-turned vampire yeah. um 
I remember that from the audiobook. Justine, I, that's like a line I remember, just the way she sounds so crazy. Mm-hmm. Just like that, like you're a kid, like, like, you're not going to like it. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Marsters did a good job yeah. with that one. He made her sound really creepy. Yeah. And then, of course, Harry going, he gets out the door, and he's just in, like, these rubber ducky yep. boxers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I love this scene so much where, like, they are basically like Bianca meets him in the hallway with Ortega. No, it's not Ortega. Who's the other guy? Mm. It's, it's whoever it's whoever like Bianca's like vampire father is, I believe. God, I I don't know why I'm blanking on his name. Um, but they like come out into the hall and they're like, Harry, we'll let you go right now. If you just leave, susan and harry's like it's not worth it and they're like you're gonna blow this entire place to smithereens like you should just leave susan and go and he's like no one life is worth it he has he has a great quote that i can't remember but he's like somebody says like there's no one life that's worth all that disrupt destruction he says there's something like there's no one life that isn't worth like oh it's so good and then he burns the house down then he burns the house down he kills bianca uh, he kills, uh, assuming all the vampires in there, yeah. and it really kicks off this war Feud. with the with the red court of yeah. vampires, um, and then that leads us into summer night, where Harry has been just like um, absolutely distraught over this whole Susan thing because she decides at the end of Great Peril she's she, gotta go. She's like, I gotta yeah. go. Yeah. And, um, matter of fact, I think there's a great quote at the end of Grave Barrel. Oh, yeah, this is where we first meet our crazy winter queen. Mm Mm-hmm, yep. That's right, I remember, that's a good scene. Mm -hmm. That's a good scene. Yeah. I like that scene a lot. Yeah, I I love this quote at the end of of Grave Barrel. I know we're on summer night, but it just reminded me of it. Uh, (laughs) the council is going to be furious at me, but what else is new? Susan doesn't call, doesn't visit, but I got a card from her on my birthday, Halloween. She only wrote three words. I'll let you guess which ones. Mm. What three? Yeah, that is good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. So I, I just listened to this. Um, this is the most recent book that I, oh, nice. I listened to this week. And yeah, we get to meet Mav for yeah. the first time. And it's a great showing. She is super... Great. Uh, creepy. Yep. And super sh- powerful still. Super Very powerful. Mysterious. And but I will say that even all that, Queen of Fairy can do anything she wants. Mm-hmm. Harry still knows that she's something weird. I always yep. thought that was kind of cool. Like, yep. Like, he feels a doorknob, right? And there's like static or something mm-hmm. on it. Yeah. Yeah. And he just has this like back of the head thought, like this like okay, intuition. This, yeah. This might be weird. Like, be careful. Mm-hmm. Sure enough, he tries to, what, tries to hit her hand with the iron and she like, steps flies back 10 feet or whatever yeah Yeah. so like he he knows that his office door cannot because when he gets there she's in the office yes yep and he's like my door can't like be opened like it's warded oh like it would blast her into the sky yep um so he kind of knows something is up but he just at first i'm sure he just kind of thinks that she's something weird yeah Um, I don't think he expects her to be a no, queen of fairy. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah. But he he's gets even shocked when he finds out. Yeah, he's like, "Holy shit! Yeah, you're, you're her." And, but he gets enough clues over the next like ten to fifteen minutes, where he like pulls his gun on her. And he's yep. like, "You stay still," and she's like, "What are you doing?" Mm-hmm. And he just pulls a nail out yep. of his desk and he rolls it on the desk. The second, yeah, it gets close and to her hand. She, and like, she like flies across back. the room. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. It's such yeah. a good scene. And then he's like, I thought so. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought something weird. But yeah. Then, I think then he asks, like, so, because he still doesn't know at that point if she's mad. Mm-hmm. I can't remember how. Does she, does she say, like, she, listen, I am mad? Yeah, she, okay. she tells him. Yeah. She tells him. And she also tells him that his fairy godmother has sold his debt to her. His yeah. debt to her yep. Yep. Um, and that he has to complete three favors for her, but he gets to choose, choose. which yeah. favors. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, yeah, there's there's a lot of great, a lot of great scenes from this book. I loved um, one of the funnier ones is when Morgan shows up at his door. Oh, yeah, this is good. And Harry's like, "What do you?" Or no, Morgan's like, 
what are you doing, Harry? Like, he's just, like, getting in his face, like, like, what are you doing in here tonight? And Harry's like, well, I was going to open up a bottle of baby oil and put on a porno, but I guess you've interrupted that. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's some really yeah. funny quote. Where he says, like, you want to join me? Or yeah. Oh, like yeah. yeah. He says, he says, but I'm afraid I don't have enough for two. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, what it was. That's yeah. It. That's it. <laughs> so, yeah, I loved, I love that. Yeah. Um, what, what else from Summer Night? The only things that I can really think of, especially something that, like, takes place over yeah. the course of, or something that has ramifications for the rest of the series, yeah. is the murder of Aurora. Yes. And uh, Aurora um, is the previous summer lady, and it's what make, makes Lily become right. the next summer lady. That's where we, finally, we find the stone, the stone table, right? Yes, yeah. it happens on the stone yeah. table, exactly. Well, and Harry does it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. that's another big it. moment I remember. Yeah, like having to having to do that. Was, yeah, in his head, he was that was a lot for him. Yeah, and I, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think Summer Night is the book where Lloyd Slate gets imprisoned by Mab. Mm, that, I think yeah. I think that's when he very first. That sounds right. When Mab starts her torture mm-hmm. torture chamber on him. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, which is scary. It's scary for sure. Um. But yeah, this this also has a great ending. Um, if I can flip to it, so up to this point, he's had a tenuous relationship with Billy and the werewolves, yeah. and um, because he he sees them as kids who like have a little bit of power and think that they're hot shit. Yep. Yep. And at the beginning of this book, we have the toads falling from the sky in in the storm, and I love the uh, he he's trying to figure out if they're like real toads. Yeah. He's like they they might just be like a conjuration of magic. And he's like because Billy asks him, he's like, why are you taking the toads he's home like, with you? We gotta see if they like poop or something, right? Or, like, well, he's like some weird... he's like we gotta see if they disappear. Yeah. Okay. And then this whole fight breaks out. And before they, they, Harry like apologizes to yeah. Billy because he was giving yep. him like a lot of shit. Yep. And they're like about to head home and Harry, uh, he like throws the toad down and Billy's like, you're not keeping it? He's like, no, I know it's real. Yep. And Billy's like, <laughs> how do you know that? And he's like, it shit in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. <clears throat> that was a great, great one. But at the beginning of this book, Harry is distraught after the events oh, of yeah, Grave Peril. Yeah, he's a, he's a total mess. So Billy like tells him like, "Hey, I went yeah. to your office." Yes. I checked your uh and Exactly. Enter Mab, right? Enter Mab. Yeah. 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 Right. Checked your emails for you and Harry's like, yeah. "You you don't have the right to do. Why did you do that?" And mm-hmm. Billy's like, "Come on, man. You're a fucking mess." Yeah. Just He's like, "You're about to get evicted." Yeah, exactly. Like, like your rent's due. Like I saw the mail. Just right. go do this. Get paid. Right. Yeah. Right. Um and so Harry, he's just not living his best life at all. And at the at the very end, um, <laughs> at the very end, he kind of has a change of heart, just in his, I guess, outlook of life for the time being. He's still upset about Susan, of course. He's still like kind of trying to find a cure, but he's realizing that his friends care for him yeah. and that he has not been like a, a good friend, yep. but also he just hasn't been like living life. Yep. And so he, he goes to Billy and George's house at, uh, at, at the end of the, at the end of the story. And they're playing, uh, I think this is where we see them play Arkanos nice. for the first time. They're nice. like tabletop game. Uh, I took a seat at the table and got handed pizza and Coke and listened to the voices and chatter start up again and thought to myself that it was a whole hell of a lot better than spending another night crucifying myself in my lab. You know what disappoints me? Billy asked after a while. No, what? All of, <laughs> all of those fairies and duels and mad queens and so on, and no one quoted Billy Shakespeare. Not even once. I stared at Billy for a minute and started to laugh. My own aches and bruises and cuts and wounds pained me, but it was an honest stretchy pain, something that was healing. I got myself some dice and some paper and some pencils and settled down with friends to pretend to be Thorg the Barbarian, (laughs) to eat, drink, and be merry. 
Lord, what fools these mortals be, which is a Shakespeare <laughs> yep. quote. That's awesome. And it's just, it's one of my like favorite endings to these books. Like I love it when we just get like a, I, w- I would say most of them have like happy endings, yeah. but I love when we get like a cozy ending. Yep. You know what yep. I mean? Just something like warm and fuzzy, something warm yeah. and fuzzy where we're just like sitting down with, uh, with the alphas and playing some Arcanos. Yeah. yeah. Can't beat that. Death masks. Gabe and I listened to a quote the other night. We were we were looking for for quotes for our tattoos, and I was like, I was like, this part of the audiobook made me cry so hard at work the other day. Yeah, I'm like, I have you have to listen to yeah. it with me. And obviously, we've all we've listened to these books a million times, but I was like, I I need you to be here in the room with me and listen to it with me. And it is shiro's uh yes. note that he god. sends to harry so sad oh my god it was so brutal and i think i think the part that really got me was where shiro um is almost kind of prophesying what the next few years for harry are gonna be like and he says uh you know your he says your path is often a dark one and paraphrased you know, you don't have the um, luxury of the luxury of of living, normal. yeah, of yeah. living in like a black and white yeah. world like we do. Like the knights have very strict rules. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's yes or no for them. Yeah, and there's a lot of gray for Harry. Yeah, and and he has to make some Decisions extremely difficult based on that gray. Yeah, exactly. And and Shiro's like, I don't like. I see something yep. bad happening, and I stop it. Yep, and. There's not like, you know, we even see it with, uh, this is another great scene, when Harry and Sonya and uh, Michael are going to visit uh, Snake Boy. Yes, yeah. And Harry's like, oh, yes. he's like, yes. we're going to kick your ass up between your ears and all this stuff. And Cassius, Snake Boy. This is such a good scene. Dude. He like, he like opens up his head and he pulls his coin out. Yeah. And he says, I am sorry. And he like hands yeah, his oh, coin. Knights, what will you do? Knights. Yes. And, and take they, my coin. Yeah. And they, they can't hurt him. Yeah. They, the knights can't touch him. But right. Harry's like, listen, I'm going to fuck you up. Dude. Yes. Like, I don't care what these knights say. Mm-hmm. You've done some bad stuff and mm-hmm. I'm here to make you pay for it. Yeah. They're all, they're all walking out the door. Yeah. And, and Harry's like, hold on. That's Harry's. Bad. Yeah, because the guy, the guy just keeps taunting, like taunting non-stop. them. Not even taunting. He was that guy was being ruthless. Yes, like, exactly. Very violent vomit out of his mouth. It was just terrible things he was saying. Yes, exactly. And Harry's like, uh, you know, fortunately for you, uh, Michael and Sonya are good men. Yeah, they are good, honest men. Yeah. Unfortunately for you, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. And takes the bat and just beats the shit out of him. Yeah. He breaks like every breaks bone both, in his body. Both of his legs, shatters oh his ankles. God. It's yeah, ruthless. It's brutal. And then he uh and, and I love I love the surprise on Cassius's face because he didn't factor in yeah. Harry, who's not a knight of the cross. Yep. Um and uh and Harry's like, there's a payphone downstairs, I'll let you crawl your way to it, and he flicks a quarter at him. And then in the car, Harry and Son or uh why do I keep calling him Harry? Michael and Sonya yeah. are laughing and they're like, Harry, you know that payphones don't cost a quarter anymore, right? <laughs> and Harry's like, I know. And then Michael and Sonya <laughs> crack up. It's just it's such a good scene. Yeah. Um God, there's so many, there's so many moments in Death Mountain. This is where we meet Anna Valmont yeah. for the first time. Um, and God, what was the scene that I was talking about before, before Cassius and stuff? Because there was so many good. Oh, the note, the note that um, Shiro left Harry at the end of the book, and that's how I got on to you know how they're very black and white, like yeah. the like Michael and Sonya, they can't. Like once he gives up his coin, they cannot do yeah, anything can't more. Touch him, yeah. Um, and so I loved, I loved this acknowledgement from someone like Shiro, who gives his life for Harry. Uh, you know, Harry's strung up by Nicodemus, yep. and Sonya is is the cavalry coming over the hill, but in a very, 
not in like a we're gonna save everybody and kick some ass kind of way yeah. it's like a very like sac sad sacrificial yeah. way and sonya's just like you know give me harry and you can have me and you yep. can you can have me for 24 hours and they brutalize the man which Viciously. is awful um and we see it in the in the airport yep they use the shroud on him yeah and they yeah they did like the plague like the plague yep. curse where he's plague got like all these different plagues yeah. and stuff um and it's just uh it, it's it's devastating but the the note that he leaves harry is very you know just f from this person that has that level of sacrifice yeah. the acknowledgement that harry is not going to live an easy life yeah that he he he's, still has more to do yeah, still has more to do mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah it was it was beautiful i i cry every yeah, single time it's really sad man when i when i read that one yeah um but another marcone one is one that gets me in the feels oh, again this oh, this okay. this whole yeah. book gets me in the feels like everything in this book is just like emotional spencer 100 percent um and it is Finding out that Marcone, because he, he takes the shroud, yep. and Harry follows him yeah. all across the country covertly, and Marcone goes into a hospital and sits down. Hospice. Yeah, with this girl uh, labeled Jane Doe. Yep. Like, nobody knows what Young her name girl, is. Right? She's mm -hmm. like, yeah, she's little. Yeah. And he he goes in and he, he pulls the cover down and he wraps her in the yep. shroud and he puts a teddy bear under her yeah. arm and he opens up a book and he reads to her. Yeah. And it's just like, what? I remember reading it for the first time and just being like, Show what shock. is yeah. this? And, um, and for a while you think it's his kid. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so then he comes out and Harry's just sitting on the, yeah. on the back of Marcone's car and harry says that he saw all of these emotions, emotions yeah, yeah he's like he he considered killing me he considered running away he considered denying everything yeah. like he went through all the stages um and then they just have like a very honest talk and marcone's like i will kill you if you tell anybody and you cannot take the shroud like i need this to save her and isn't harry like okay yeah like, harry's right. like okay that's fair yeah like i understand yep and he gives him three days because he's like, that's the amount of time yep. that Christ was wrapped in yeah. the shroud. He's like, if it's if after three days, you know, she's healed, then great. But if not, then it's not going to work. Yeah. yeah. And it, and then we learn the story behind the girl, too. We do in White Knight. Oh, we do in White okay, Knight. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, but in this one, Harry, at the end of it, Marcone's driving away and Marcone's or Harry's saying, you know, I've had a lot of animosity for Marcone, yeah. and I've kind of attributed a lot of the city's evil to him. Yep. And he's like, but he's like, I'm not going to say I was wrong about Marcone, but I definitely don't hate him yeah. anymore. Yeah. And sure. like, I respect him yep. a lot more. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's always just like an amazing scene for, for me, real. for sure. Blood rights. The main scene from this book for me this is the one with the porn set and everything oh yeah, yeah. and there's like the the evil eye the curse evil eye. that's going around yeah. malocchio yeah malocchio um the one i mean i i like a lot of this book yeah. i wouldn't say it's probably not my favorite book just because like 75 percent of it i'm like it's fine yeah um yeah. it's kind of like its own it's like it's kind of its own story too like there's yeah. not a whole lot of connection to other books right mm -hmm. yeah the, the biggest connection is finding out that thomas is yes, harry's brother for sure that's but the, the biggest rest but the, the rest book, of it yeah yeah is kind of kind of on its own a little bit um we also get at the end of the book we get uh murphy kincaid and harry and I guess technically Ebenezer, but he's waiting at the car, and they all go down into the vampire. Yeah. Actually, you know what? No, there is some bigger ties because we get, or no, that happens in death. <coughs> in death masks. Harry picks up the coin. That's when it gets thrown oh, into the yard. Oh, okay, that's that's yeah. a big deal. Yeah, that's, that's a, a big, big deal, deal for yeah. that one. Yeah. Um, but for this one, um, Harry, this is where Harry's hand gets burned. Oh yes, from the mm -hmm. from the uh, flamethrower thing. No, but what 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 does he call those? Thralls. No, it's another word. Yeah, it's an, there's another word for it. Oh, um, 
I can try and Google it. Renfield. 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 That's yes, it. Renfield. That's what it was. Or Renfield. Renfield with the flamethrower. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he's dealing with the with the black court of vampires, yep. and they have the flamethrowers and Mavras there. Mavras we animals. still we still don't have any answers about like what Mavra is. Like obviously she's like a black court vampire, but yeah. even like where we're at now, we know very very, very little, little about Mavra. Other, yeah, other than she's in league with some big bad. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, we get that. We get the. Um, we get the Kincaid removing Murphy's pants scene yes. when she's going through the lasers. Yep. yep. <laughs> that was great. Um, and we also see, we get an interesting look at Kincaid through Harry's sight. He sees like this big hulking scion yep. looking thing yep. with like horns and yeah. shit. Um, so that's pretty interesting. But by far, I, it, it honestly like might be it's got to be in my top three favorite yeah. scenes in the entire series yeah. is um, Harry has. Uh, so Thomas, Thomas tells Harry that he is his brother and Harry doesn't believe him. Mm-hmm. And so Harry's like, what if we soul gaze? Yeah. And he's like, it's not like a truth detector, but it'll, it'll give me enough information yeah. to know if I'm your brother or yeah. not. So Thomas agrees to it. And he goes into this, uh, this like area that's all like checkered and marbled and stuff. And he sees Thomas in the middle of this room, and there's like just a stand up mirror. And Thomas is like reaching his arm inside, and then there's like a demon that's also reaching yeah. his arm out. And the demon's claws are like tearing into Thomas's flesh. Because and he's fighting it all the time, he's yeah, fighting it so much. Yeah, and it's like it's like this metaphor, and and yeah. Harry often describes uh, a soul gaze as kind of a metaphor for whatever is going on in in someone's life. And obviously, Thomas is like a white core vampire, yeah. so he's kind of struggling with his inner demon yeah. all the time. And I just think this is like one of the just the greatest like representations of this kind of thing ever. We also get uh, Harry's mom mom, for the first time. And she's telling him like, this is something that he'll always struggle with. And like, it may destroy him, but he'll never surrender himself to it. Never give up. And yeah, she even says like, man, he fights, he fights so hard every day. He fights every Mm -hmm. single day. Yeah. It's cool. And Harry asks like, is this what it's like for him all the time? And she's like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then she tells him like, you know, he, he is of my blood, just like you are of my blood. And it's this confirmation that Harry like has someone in the world that is like family. Cause Harry is like literally the biggest deal ever. Yeah. He doesn't have any family. He doesn't have any family. Yeah. And that's, he's got a brother. It's a big deal. Right. And that's why we see him be so protective of Thomas. I mean, all throughout the series, but especially in like battleground and peace talks talks and stuff um but yeah it is it is an amazing scene and for me i i've talked about this in our uh blood rights episode that we did so if you want to see me cry on camera (laughs) and uh, (laughs) and talk about it at length i talked about it there but uh basically i used to be uh, an addict when i was younger and i i read this book for the first time when i was uh detoxing at my mom's house and you know i was I was probably like 19 or 20 or something. And at this point, my mom like did not understand what this whole addiction thing was about. She's like, why do you keep going back to this? Like you get clean for a little while and you go back to it, you get clean, you go back. And I couldn't. Um, and by the way, anybody who, who's curious, I've been clean for many, many years now. But um, at the time, you know, I'd been really struggling with this and I... I remember I was sitting on her couch and I was reading this and I got to that scene for the first time ever. And I just started bawling just like full on. Like, I don't, I haven't cried that hard in a long time. Um, and my mom came down and she's like, what is going on? Um, I think she was like walk, walking out to the yeah. kitchen and she just sees me crying. She's like, what is going on? And I'm like, you need to read this because it'll help you 
like understand yeah. what it's like for me every day yeah. in the midst of this like addiction. Um, and so she did, she sat and she read like the whole chapter with me. And uh, I, I think it, it like really helped my mom kind of like understand, yeah. you know, what that feels like when you're actively going through an addiction. Luckily, I don't have to fight this same kind of fight every day now. It's much, 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 much easier. Um, but at the time, it was really, really tough. And that scene uh, had a huge impact, not only on how I, it helped me like visualize yep. the addiction, yep. but it also helped my mom understand there, there's like a metaphor for her to like kind of bridge the yep, gap. Like, oh, grab onto. I kind of get it. Yeah. I kind of get it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's it's it's one of my favorite scenes in the Dresden Files, and I think I'm gonna get a tattoo. Yeah, you of should it as well. You should. Deadbeat. Zombie dinosaurs. Yep. Oh my god, I love I love this book so one of my much. Favorite favorite scenes of the entire series is in this book. Yes, yeah. totally. Is it the one? Uh, is it the Lashio one? No, it's oh, probably okay. not one that you're going to guess. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, there. so we all know the zombie dinosaur that's in Deadbeat. I am getting it uh, right above my above my tattoo. I'm going to get Sue right there, kind of coming over this way, roaring. Um, I saw the template for it, and it looked really, really yeah. good. I just didn't get it the other day. But uh, yeah, I, I, love, I love Deadbeat. There's so many great moments. I feel like this is where... Uh, not that the series didn't have big bombastic moments before, but this, I think this is like this. Yeah, this is like the first really noticeable big like crazy yeah out of this world kickoff. I I think if they were gonna do a Dresden Files TV show, yeah. like they should just start with Deadbeat. Oh, totally. Because like it, you you get the end of the season climax with the big like uh you know dark uh, dark hollow dark hollow. Yep. Thank you. And, um, you know, Cowl just up there, like, floating, yeah, like, like, calling in this absorb, dark hollow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the spirits, like, yep. going. It, yep. it would just be great for... It'd be so cool. And, and and Jim Butcher has specifically said that Deadbeat is a jumping on point yeah. for new readers. Because at the time, he had had all his books in paperback. And Deadbeat was the first one where his publisher came to him and said... You're selling so well that we're going to start doing hardcovers nice. for you. Nice. And the publisher said, with the celebration of the hardcovers, like people, like hardcovers are like a whole nother step in like marketing and oh, stuff. Oh, totally. Yeah. He's like, so there's going to be people that are seeing your books for the very first time. Yeah. And we need something to introduce everybody to the world. Yeah. So Jim Butcher specifically wrote this to be okay for brand new readers gotcha. and originally it was supposed to be this was where molly was going to become his apprentice mm. um he ended up moving it to proven guilty later uh but he was gonna have he was gonna have molly on the back of sue instead wow, of waldo butters interesting um and so i've i've always loved deadbeat just because it's kind of like a cool piece of yep. history yeah. of the dresden files yeah. but also because it's an amazing book um what's what's your scene what's my your... favorite scene is uh towards the end we again meet snake boy mm. the guy whose yes. legs were crushed oh yeah right and so mm -hmm. he is he kind of the, he's a protagonist that or antagonist whatever i don't know but antagonist he, he, yeah. antagonist thank yeah. you uh that's in this book one of them and he's causing a lot of trouble and we get to a scene i'm pretty sure it's either after the dinosaur ride or maybe slightly before it's slightly before slightly it. before yeah. okay where uh lucius i think is <laughs> his name right lucius something the cassius snake? cassius thank mm -hmm. you um he's got harry cornered mm -hmm. right and it's not looking good for harry he's about to gut him he's about to gut him yeah. cut him open and kill him yeah for mm -hmm. sure and then here come my favorite character ever mouse and then waldo around the corner mm -hmm. and mouse jumps on him and and Harry gives him this command. Kill yeah, mouse. It's my favorite. Dude. Yes, it's so awesome. Oh god, it's it's. I think it's the first time in the series that, and maybe the first since. I don't know if we've yeah. really seen him give the kill command. No, it's it was yeah. It's one of those things that I never forgot. It's mm -hmm. just like yeah, it's just undescribable the feeling it gave me because it yeah. was like it's so serious. Like it's yeah. life and death, and you know, mouse is so loyal, and he's just like kill him. Yeah, kill, yep. him. He's kill him. Get rid of him. Yep. Which for Harry's a big deal. Yeah. 
Oh man, yeah. it's so good. There's there's that he he kills he intentionally kills Cassius yep. and then he also intentionally kills uh Corpse Taker. Yep. Just and, because he knew that she was swapped with. Yeah, yeah. she was swapped with but Lucio. But he still, he still, he knows it was murder. Like yeah, it was just murder. There's God. There's so many. There's so many great twists in this book. That's one of them. Where Harry, like he, he just has a gut yep. feeling that she's swapped with Lucio. Yep. There's one thing that Lucio said. I can't mm-hmm. remember what it was, but Harry was like. No, no, that's not Lucio. That's not Lucio. Yeah. And he shoots her in the back of the head in cold blood because she's just walking out. She doesn't think that he's yeah. onto her at all. Yeah. And he just like pulls out his gun and like shoots her right in the back of the head. Yeah. And everybody jumps on him. Like Morgan, Morgan is like, like there. we see Morgan let loose. Yeah. In this fight. Yeah. Like because Morgan's stupid powerful and we see him do yeah. some crazy stuff. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And Ramirez comes around the corner with the body swap yep. Lucio and, and he's, he's like, like no this is Morgan, Lucio like, no stop Morgan I gazed her I gazed yep. her like this yep. is Lucio yeah Morgan just can barely barely not kill Harry he's right so hard oh my god yeah. it's such a good scene I love I love that twist I love there oh god now I want to do a full read dude I was just Deadbeat. thinking I was literally just thinking like you know I got like a seven hour drive to get home tomorrow yeah morning. just read Deadbeat. I'm just gonna no I'm gonna I'm gonna start fresh I'm gonna reread all of them dude oh yeah <laughs> I need to go through it again it's about that time yeah yeah for sure yeah I oh my so my my favorite scene yeah. from this book involves uh Lashiel yeah and this is it's um very good one and what's her name Sheila Sheila. Yeah. Yep, yep. And she's the assistant at Bach Ordered Books. And I, I love Bach Ordered Books. I can't remember if he... I think he comes up in probably probably the first yep. two, and then we see I him think. again right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. That's right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I love Bach Ordered Books. Yeah. Um, he, uh, he's got this assistant, Sheila, and... The only times that Harry is interacting with her is when she's walking him to the back of the store to find a book. Yeah. And so he's like talking with her and it gives the reader this impression of like, oh, yeah, everybody can hear yep. Sheila. Everybody knows that she's there. She's interacting with yep. people. And when you go back and read it, you're like, mm, no, she's yeah. not. And there's even a time like right after that scene where Bach, like Harry goes to like, he gives leave. him a look. Yeah. He gives, he's box like, are you okay? Yeah. Like what the heck? And Harry's like, yeah, I'm fine. And they, he just leaves. Yeah. But there's like super, you know, that's yeah. like a big foreshadow. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. And like, I dude, I, dude, I wish this is one of like those books that I wish I could read for the first time again, because I remember yeah. <laughs> the feeling Me too. <laughs> Me of too. realizing that in Sheila the, isn't real in the room, dude. Like oh, when, man, Oh yeah, it's crazy. Butters walks in here. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm but sure that's, yeah, he. Yeah. Well, Sheila's like, you she know, keeps dragging him on, and she even goes to like her apartment. Right? Yeah, she's and, like, like, she's like, come to my yeah, apartment, yeah. and, and he goes and hangs out with her, and yeah. kisses her maybe or something like. Yep. you know, they they're they're awesome together. Like it's wonderful. Yeah, you're like, this is gonna be great. Yep. And yep. then he he tells so that all happens. He leaves, and he tells Butters they're like in in the car yeah. or something and he tells butters he's like hey i need to go by somewhere real quick before we go do this dark hallow yeah. because i need to check on someone yep. Yep. butters like okay and harry goes up to what he sees as yeah, like a normal the, apartment, apartment building apartment building goes yeah. upstairs and yeah goes in and asks you what's going on. and then butters <laughs> butters is like butter comes in behind him because he's like what is this like this mm-hmm. is an abandoned building and uh He's like Harry, Harry, what, what are you doing, Harry? What are you doing? And he gets there's this moment. He's like, like in just, the dark. Yeah, just, just like, like utter in the dark. confusion mm-hmm. where he's where he looks at Butters. What? What are you like? What are you talking about? Butters like this room's empty. There's it's dark. There's nobody in here. Oh, and Harry's man. like, what? What are you talking about? And that's when we hear Lashiel talk to him and kind of explain. And then she, yeah. Then she in his mind lights the room on fire. She's like, I could have yes. killed you so many times. Yes. Like, I would force you to jump out of this window. There's not a thing you could do about it. Oh my god. I was like, dude, holy crap. That's right. Yeah. That's right. She literally like tr- fakes burn the building down and he goes to run out the window and then she stops it. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, dude, it's it's so good. And, and imagine that scene even earlier from Butter's point of view where weird. yeah. He 
Harry's like, I gotta go in here real quick. And Butters is like, what the fuck? It's just like this burned well, yeah, out and building. That's why, he, that's why he went upstairs. He's yeah. like, this is not right. Something's wrong. He's like, I'm something's sure he just wrong. just followed right by an area to see what was going on. Yeah. yeah. And then he hears Harry talking to this chick in the dark in a room. And he's like, Harry, yeah. something's, this is not right. You yeah. need to stop. Yeah, you know, something's gotta, going on. Yeah. Oh, God, that's so terrifying. Yep. Because we know, we know that Harry touched the coin in Death Masks. And we... But Butcher did such a good job of giving us one book in between where we had no kind ramifications, of exactly. kind of forget about exactly. it. And so then by the time we get to Deadbeat, you're you're just you don't know. You're and like happens, way you're off. Like, Holy shit! And everything comes back. You're like, oh yeah. my god! You're like, oh, remember all my these scenes where that's god. why Bach was acting weird. That's why you know this was happening or that. Yeah, it's crazy. Such a good scene. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, at the end, uh, Harry gets um promoted not promoted but he gets like hired as like a warden yeah he gets they gave him the freaking gray uh gray coat mm -hmm. and then that's because of the war right yeah she was like listen i know you don't want to do this but we need your help yeah like you need to get on board yeah oh harry gets his guitar at the end yeah uh butters guitar. yeah he gets his uh his guitar from uh from butters for his hand therapy yep, yep. and yep. stuff Proven guilty. Yep. This is another banger. By far my favorite book. Um, God, I love I love Proven Guilty so much, and I'm so glad that I was able to find it in hardcover because it's very, very, very difficult. Yeah. To find Proven Guilty in in hardcover. Um, God, so so many good scenes. I don't even know where to start. Um, do you have any off the top of your head? Um, yeah, mine are more towards the end, mm -hmm. though. Go ahead. Um, obviously Molly in this book mm -hmm. is awesome. Yes. We see a lot of her, we see a lot of her teenage rebellion, uh, struggles that she's having. Um, but I think for me, one of the big scenes was when she is, you know, she's been tried. She's on her way to the trial. Yes. Um, and they're there and she's terrified, just scared shitless. And Harry's like, listen, girl, I'm not, you... I'm here with you. Mm -hmm. They will have to take you over my dead body. Yeah. That's what he says, right? Yeah. That was really cool. Um, but it's about it's about to go bad, and then all of a sudden, the door opens. Mm -hmm. And here comes her dad. Yeah. Dude, that's so cool. And, and he comes in, and he's, just, he's, he's like, saves, like, four wardens from, you know, whatever it was, vampires or anything, and they're just like, uh, they're just like, all right, stop, hold on, what's going on here? Secure the area. And uh, then Rashid comes in, right? So or, Rashid yeah. is in prior. Okay. And okay. he he's the, one, right. he's that the one that stalls the vote or like changes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, he okay. stalls the vote because yeah. Merlin's like cuz it's just Merlin and Rashid. Those are the only two council members that are there. Okay. And so Rashid is like Wait, he's like I. He's this. like I still get a vote, and Merlin's like. But Rashid like calls that door opening, right? Like he knows when it's. Gonna yes, happen. he knows okay. when it's yeah. gonna happen. Yeah. yeah, that's the first like little tip off yeah. that we get to him having some a like impressions. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, that's. Anyway, so that's, that's an awesome scene, and then Michael like you know coming in and standing with his daughter was just so cool. Yeah. So my my first favorite moment, I I literally made notes in my phone <laughs> for this one. Yep. Um, so Harry and Charity have been at each other's throats the entire series, yep. and now he's looking for her girl. And, and of course, there's all like the splatter con stuff. My my favorite moments are also kind of near the end. Yeah. Um, and Harry, uh, he's like trying to. That's right. They're in the church, right? They're all in the they're, church. Well, first they're in his lab. Okay. okay. And they're in his apartment. Yeah. And he's he's trying he's trying to use little Chicago to find Molly. Okay. And he's using one of her baby hairs, but it's not working. Oh, and it's and because the hair is so old. Blood. Yes. yes. Okay. Murphy comes okay. in. And she's like, "Well, why can't you use like some of her blood yeah. or something?" Yeah. Um, and uh, and it's it's like this whole like revelation. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, and so. So she, uh, up to this, sorry, up to this point, they, they had been arguing so much and it had been this huge, like back and forth. She even hit Harry at one time. And then she's like sitting in his dingy little apartment. And before Murphy comes in with the, with the idea that they could use charity's blood, 
Harry's like sitting on the couch with her and he's like, I have done everything or he's like, sorry, I've totally failed. And she's like, have you done everything that you know how to do? And he's like, yes. And she's like, then I could hardly ask you for more. Mm. And it's just this moment where she is like, she's like in the middle of like praying through all this. And she's like very, um, just like calm and giving Harry a lot of slack and just having like this understanding with him that they are both looking out for Molly's best interest. They're both trying to get her back and that maybe, maybe she's misjudged Harry a little bit. Um, and so it's it's just this great scene. I, I love the whole scene of them like trying to find Molly in with little Chicago and just having these talks of like he's like, I don't know if I can find her and she's like, You're okay, you'll find her. Yeah. And just like the this reassurance. Um Chapter forty one is it it might be my number one favorite scene in the entire series. Soul Gaze. It is the soul gaze, yeah. It is a whole scene around it too. Yeah, just totally, like, totally. just like, I think that's where the quote I was thinking of was from. Mm. Like, don't worry, I won't. You know, they'll take her over my dead. Yes, body. So exactly. Her. Yep, exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just this scene where he's sitting in the church because he knows that Molly's gonna wake up and try to run. Yep. And sure enough, she gets up and he sees her and he's like, "Hey, come over here." And they have this whole talk where he's like, you know, how did you get your powers? Like, when did you realize you had powers? Like, all this stuff. Um, And she's kind of filling him in. And he's like, well, I have some bad news for you. Um, You know, you did black magic and the council wants to kill you for it. He's like, but technically I have this thing where I can like, you know, petition for you and you could be my apprentice, but he's like, the only way I'm doing that is if I can soul gaze you and see that you're actually like there, that there's something to say. See if you're willing to make the choice to to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So he soul gazes her and we get this really great. It's one of my easily my favorite soul gaze, I would say. Yeah. Um, and he sees Molly in all of these like stained glass images. Um, some of them are her, uh, like full dark wizard. Some of her, some are of her as like basically a heroin addict and like on the streets and kind of maybe alluding to like the gray lady yep. later on. And some are her too, like with a family. Kids, yeah. Right? Family and like kids. pleasantly happy uh, and yeah pregnant mother whatever it was yeah like, exactly happy, yeah yeah um and so then the choice he's like okay like there's there's something that can be saved yeah but you have to make the choice are you going to give up your power or are you going to keep it yeah and they have this talk about you know she's like you you try to save people with your powers and I want to do the same thing. Yeah. Um, because unbeknownst to Harry before now, she's been looking up to him for years and years. Yeah. And, uh, and he didn't even know that she had these powers. Otherwise he would have intervened much, much earlier. And I wonder what, I wonder like how much of a different story it would be if he had realized that she had powers. Yeah way before this yeah. because she's 17 in this book and i think her powers manifested when she was like 14, 14 yeah. Yeah. yeah and so that would have been way back in like death masks yep. maybe sounds right um and so another thing too uh not to interrupt you but no, before this talk harry has a sit down with charity right no it's after okay. it's after the talk with all Molly. right then you continue <laughs> you continue uh, <laughs> i'm sure you're gonna get there yeah <laughs> okay um so yeah let's let's go on to that because basically she decides she she decides i'm gonna go before the council i'm gonna trust yep. that you have my have best my back, interest yeah. in yeah. mind um so let me i want to find the quote because yeah it's definitely amazing good. Oh, there's also a great quote. I, I don't know why I like this so much, yeah. um, but it's before Harry and Molly are like 
having the talk, but they're on their way to, they're like walking yep. somewhere. Yep. Um, and she's like telling him about how her magic manifested. Oh yes. Yeah. And, uh, he says, I, I just think I this exactly is good prose. Talk about it's awesome. He, Harry says, I smiled a little though. My reflection in the passing window looked mostly sad. And it is just such a good representation of what this scene is like this, like everything that's about to happen yeah. is like very dour and very like yep. hard. We have hard to be. It's yeah. Like it's difficult. For yeah. Everybody. Like we, we have to do some like difficult yep. things. Yep. Um, but there's also like the joy of like finding your powers yeah. for the first time. Doesn't and he also say like, cause she tells him about how like she, she just made a veil by accident, right? And he's like, "Damn, kid, yes, you made a veil." Yeah, That's he's like, "I can't stuff. even I do can't that." Even do that, yeah. yeah. That was just like a little bit of encouragement for mm-hmm. her, which was really cool. Yeah, yeah, that was that was super cool. He's like, "Yeah, everybody has their strengths yep. and weaknesses," and yep. he's like, "My strengths is uh, are not veils. Yeah, like, <laughs> I sure. can't do them." But Fire. You, yeah, you you pulled it up first try. It's yeah. really impressive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just I love, I I just think this scene in particular is written so well because you know like i just told you guys i i had a a big drug problem and i've been to court many 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 times and it is nerve-wracking like it is it is terrifying when you're sitting there in court and you don't know if you're about to be taken to jail or what yeah Yeah, yes and uh and so i i know that feeling the night before when you're like talking with your lawyer basically and they're like i'm gonna do my best mm-hmm. like i'm gonna i'm yeah. i got your back i'm yeah. not gonna let him take you like that yeah. and like oh man it's i think jim just like wrote this chapter from from such an honest honest place yeah. a realistic place um I also like it's about choices, Molly. This yep. one is yours because yep. she's asking, like, should I? Dick, should I run? Or well, like, or sh- yeah, she's asking, should I run? And then she's like, should I tell my parents? She's yeah. like, I should ask my parents, yeah. right? And he says, this is about choices, Molly. Yep. This one is yours. Yeah. This is your choice yep. to make. Yeah, nobody um, can make it for you. So. Yeah. Um. So then we get this. I gotta find this quote because it's a, incredible. It's one of the best in the entire series in my opinion so they go and tell charity and i love this uh oh yes okay dude i i just gonna read this i love this uh where is it mama we need to we need to have a talk because he he goes up to charity and he's like hey we need to have a chat and she's like i just want to get my kids home and then molly comes up yep she's like mom we need to have a talk and charity's like oh shit what's going on Um, and so Harry like explains to her that, you know, her daughter has magic yeah. and that this has been going on for a while now yeah. and she did some bad things with magic and Charity's like, nope, we're going to run away. We're going to hide her away. And Harry is saying the White Council will find yeah. her. And like if she doesn't do this now, it's the end. Yeah, it's the end. She'll run as far as she can, but that's yeah. not forever. And Charity's like, so you're going to tell them where she is? He's like, I'm not going to tell them anything. Yeah. I'm just telling you. I know the White Council. That's right, because I've been where she is. Yeah. yeah. And eventually they will come. Yeah. They will figure it out, and yeah. they will come for her. Like, and there will be no mercy. Yeah. And he's like, Rashid is already on to her yeah. because he's the one that gave yeah, me the gave tip. Me the that, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so it's this whole thing where Charity is having to come to grips with the idea that, you know, her – her daughter is going to have to go before this council and they may cut her head off. Um, and Charity is basically uh, is basically just, just saying no. Um, she's like, uh, <laughs> this is what Charity says. Yeah. She says, um, or Harry says, my God, Charity, I want to help her. And Charity says, that isn't why you're doing it. She snarled, rising. You're trying to get her to go with you to save your own skin. You're afraid that if they find her, they will brand you traitor for not bringing her in and execute you along with her. I found myself on my feet as well. Silence fell heavy and oppressive on the room. Yeah. And then we get Molly. Yep. Just stepping in quietly. Yep. Yes. And she says, Mama, Molly said quietly, breaking it. 
Please tell me what Harry has done in the past two days to make you think that he is selfish or cowardly. Was it when he turned to face the ogres so that we could escape? Was it when he tr when he traded away the obligations the summer lady owed him in order to attempt the rescue? Charity was shocked silent for a second. Then her face heated and she said, Young lady, that isn't... Molly went on smoothly, her voice quiet, displaying neither anger nor disrespect nor weakness. Or perhaps it was when you were unconscious and nobody could have stopped him from simply taking me uh, to turn over to the council, and he instead stopped to give me a choice. She chewed on her lip for a second. You told me everything he's done since I was taken. Now he's offering to die for me, Mama. What more could you ask of oh, him? Geez. Oh, God. Charity's face reddened further, and I thought I saw something like shame on her features. She sat down again, bowed her head, and said nothing. The silence stretched, her shoulders shook. Molly slid down to kneel at her mother's feet and hugged her. Charity hugged back. The pair of them rocked slowly back and forth for a moment, and though the dim room made it hard to see, I was sure they were both crying. Perhaps you're right, Charity said after a moment. I should not have accused you so, Mr. Dresden. She squared her shoulders and lifted her head, but I will not allow her mm. to go. Um, and then... <laughs> Father for... Father Fort Hill had arrived at some point during the conversation, though none of us had noticed him in the doorway. His gentle voice was steady. Your daughter is in the right charity. She's an adult now in many ways. She's taken actions that demand she accept the responsibilities that accompany them. Um, hang on, there's another one that I need to find. Uh... Finally, she whispered, uh, I have your word on it after Harry says, like, they will, they will have to take her, like, over my dead body. I will bring your daughter back from the council safe and well. They'll have to kill me to stop yeah. me. Yeah. She says, I have your word on it. You do, I said. She stared at me for a moment. Then she looked up and said to Fort Hill, I wish Michael was here. Fort Hill asked her, If he was, what do you think he would say? Her eyes moved back to me, and she said, frowning faintly, To have faith to trust the wizard that he is a good man. The priest nodded and said, I think he would say that too. Yeah. Oh, you gotta stop reading. I'm crying. I, I know. Crazy. I know. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. It's so good. Uh, proven, proven guilty is, is amazing. There's so many, so many good moments all throughout this book. Uh, everything that happens at like splatter con, yeah, like splatter when we're crazy, when we're first like meeting, uh molly for the first time and she's got her boyfriend mm -hmm. in in jail um it's when he calls her mr dresden can you can you come help me yeah and then he comes out and he's pissed he's like you lied to me yeah. like you you <laughs> yeah. used my friendship against me yep yep um he's like i'm taking you to your parents house yeah. um but uh but yeah then the end is like you know all of that comes to a culmination with Harry standing between Morgan and uh, Harry standing between Morgan and Molly yeah. and Morgan's got the sword lifted up and Harry's like begging him. He's like, please. And yeah. that's when he's like, he gets a vote. Like, my God, man. Like, I think he says that. My God, man, what are you doing? Yes. What are we even doing? And even Morgan is like, what are we doing? Yeah, like, exactly. Yes. He, Morgan has second <laughs> thoughts. I remember that. Yeah. But he's questioning the, 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 the validity of you know, the, oh my God. I have to edit this out. The integrity of the council. No, the leader of the council. Yeah, the Merlin. Merlin. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. He's questioning the Merlin because the yeah. Merlin's like, God, I can't believe I forgot. His name. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. all right. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's it's just this great scene where you see everybody act not out of character, but like their character is kind of like pushed to their limits. Yeah. Like the Merlin is kind of pushed to his limit. Yep. And Morgan's pushed, Morgan's to, his, pushed to his. And it forces them to question. Yeah. yeah, and even even Rashid, who's normally such a quiet character yeah. that doesn't get involved, even he gets involved, yeah. and he's like, "I get a vote." Yeah, and then he like deliberates on it for yes, so long. He gives Michael until, time yes, to. That's it. Oh yeah. man, so good, dude. It's so amazing. So good. and uh, yeah, what what an incredible book. And of course, it ends with uh, Molly becoming his apprentice. He does the whole cold water thing. The start of an oh yeah, that's yeah. Right. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And yeah, you're right. It's the start of an era. Start of an era, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Literally uh, is. Literally from like here to here yep. somewhere. Yep. Good four or five books. Yeah. We yeah. get we get Molly as his apprentice yeah. and, and doing cool stuff, but um, Proven Guilty, I think, will always be my number one favorite book in the series. I There's just so many, so many good things that happen in it. White Knight is another one that is kind of, kind of my favorite. Not a, as many, like, like, series-wide yeah, favorite moments. Yeah, four favorites. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but White, White Knight is, is, is a, is yeah. a great book. Do you, can you remember any, like, specific I favorite I don't know, ones? I'd have to, it's, you just have to spark my memory. Yeah, though. so it's the one where, um, they meet the Ordo Lebes and Anna, um, and, uh, oh, his, yeah, his little, ex. The, the girl with the dog with depression, yep. right? Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And there's, a. Uh, there, oh, there's someone yes. who's like dressing up yes, as a council as a member that's like and they stealing. find out that thomas has been saving all these women yes yeah exactly okay. no this yeah, is, yeah this is cool yeah. yeah yeah i don't know i i'm sure the second we start talking about it I'm sure out. but I, I definitely remember um harry finding out like he's you know doing his inspector thing or detective mm-hmm. thing and he finds out uh that's where they first get on the beetle right or uh, the his boat yes the water yes, beetle. the water beetle yeah yeah um and uh, he sees Thomas, and they're like, "No, no, he wasn't hurting us. He yeah. didn't hurt us. He didn't hurt us." Right. And because uh, Thomas has been MIA, right, the whole book. Yeah. 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 He's he been... knows what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool book. Yeah, it's a cool book. I I love this one. Yeah. Um, we also get the reveal. I think we also do. We see her in Summer Night as well. We see uh his ex girlfriend. What's her name? Not Lily, but uh, Harry Elaine. Elaine, Elaine Mallory, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Elaine Mallory. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's there helping. She's also like who... Yeah. Like they... Okay, the first time they, they both go to like the Ordo Labias apartment, right? Mm-hmm. And, and she's hidden. She's hidden, yeah, yeah. And Harry doesn't know until later. Yeah. It's like, who was that sitting there? Yeah. We see Elaine move by some cool magic in this yeah. book. Yeah, we do. It's kind we of do. shock. Like, plug it into a wall socket, charge it up. Yeah. Shock baton thing. Yeah. The only other two... <coughs> that I can think of that I, I really, really enjoyed from White Knight is when Murphy's Murphy's got like a car bomb on the bottom of her car and it like goes <sighs> off before they get in it. Oh because Harry had like gotten upset and like put energy into yes, the ground. Yeah, he ground it out because mm-hmm. it was building up around him. Yeah. yeah. And, and, it then, and, and then it like blew up the car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a that's cool. Isn't there also a scene where there there's this boat? Right, the ship that they're on, and there's a bunch of ghouls on it, right? Yeah, that's also in this book. There's yeah, a... yeah, it's a good scene. Oh. And there's a point in time where after they're fighting these ghouls, Harry has to like make this like turn a bunch of water into ice, and he like almost dies. Like, right? Doesn't he fall in and get shot? But his duster saves him. You're like, right. From the You're right. He does. The... Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That does yeah. happen in this yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. But as he goes into the water, yeah. he gets that flashback yes, to exactly, New Mexico. Exactly. Yes. And we see, That's where we see all that brutal shit with the ghouls. Yeah, yeah, dude. The ghouls had stolen like these two kids and he like drags one dude. of the ghouls into the sand and like blasts open a hole, puts the ghoul in there, and then melts turns the it into glass, into glass, and then puts like orange juice to dude, like a red so ant he's gonna, hive. He's going to move his head and cut himself, slice his head off. Oh, That's man. brutal. Yeah. That's brutal. That was insane. That, that haunts him for a long time, mm-hmm. too. Yeah, that stays with them the entire series. Yeah. after this. Yeah, even Ramirez is like, because it's like a, a that scene, camp yeah. for the yep. kids. Yep. And Ramirez is like, "What do you think the kids will learn from this lesson, Harry?" Yeah, and he turns around and sees the kids. Just and he's all like, the kids right there. He's yeah. like, "Shit, dude." But yeah, that's the thing about Harry. He's so compassionate. Like it's, mm-hmm. you know, there's there's le- like there's a there's a limit, right? And if mm-hmm. you stay below that limit, he can think about stuff. But the second you get over that, there's no thought. Mm-hmm. It's, there's no process. Doesn't care who he scares. Doesn't care what happens. Yeah. You know, if, if you did something bad, he's going to deal with you. And it's just how it's going to be. Right. Right. Yeah, that's... But that bites him in the <laughs> ass a lot. Yeah. 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 Um, the other the other favorite moment, which is uh, probably my favorite... Not not necessarily like my favorite scene as, yeah. as an entire thing, mm-hmm. but by far my favorite monologue. And it's what I have tattooed here. Yeah is harry's monologue about pain yeah 
And he's like, you know, he starts out basically saying everybody's down on pain, uh, but pain is for the living. It's how you know you're not dead. Yeah. Um, like if you're if you're a living, breathing person, you're going to experience pain. And he goes through this list and it's just some of the most beautiful prose that I've ever seen from Jim Butcher. And he talks about like the the sharp the sharp pain that lasts all summer from like a breakup or like the the bone deep weariness and ache that is loneliness on yeah. a dark night you know what i mean like the he's like he talks about like when you when you curl up in your bed and just cry from being lonely and yeah. that being like this deep ache in your yeah. body and like the the uh the the sharp sharp stabs of failure and the other like um indescribable pain of successes yeah. he's like sometimes you get like these successes that didn't bring you the joy that, that they thought, thought it you, would right? and, and, and that's another kind yeah. of pain and it's just oh man i wish i was doing it justice but he just goes in in our white knight episode we go through the entire quote but he just goes like masterfully through all of these different types of pain and I remember reading that for the first time, like, dude, that is so accurate and just amazingly worded. Um, so yeah, that's that's by far my favorite monologue in in the series. Um, but we, uh, is it? I think it's White Knight where we figure out, yeah, because we we meet uh, Miss Demeter, who is. The chick from the first book. Yeah. Um, God, why am I forgetting her name? Uh, yeah, it's some. Yeah, Beckett. It's, Helen Beckett. Helen Beckett. Yeah. Yes. That's, and uh, and we find out he soul gazes her, and that's how we find out who the girl is in that hospital that Marcone. Oh cause, yes. Because okay. it's Helen Beckett's kid. Yes. And Marcone well, was one of his thugs shot and killed or shot yeah. shot the girl by yeah. accident. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And, yes. 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 And, yes. yes. Yeah, and Mar Marcone's right. like never been able to get past that. Get past that. Yeah, it felt awful. Oh man, yeah, that was that was a great yeah. way to like connect the two. Yep. Um, I don't, I just I love White Knight. I think it's got so many so many great moments. Lashiel dies. Yes. At the end, she takes a psychic bullet, bullet for, for Harry. Harry. Yep. Oh that man, that scene in the deeps is crazy, man. Yeah. That, that's probably one of my favorite action, action scenes yeah. in the entire book. Yeah. I know we get a lot of really good ones in Battleground, but I think the one in... Well, I, I would say that this is like the first like like true, honest-to-goodness, like pure action that we get. Right? Yeah. Because we get some action fights here and there, but this was like Yeah, we get war. like alleyway this fights like and stuff. Yeah. yeah. This is like... Yeah. yeah. This is a big, big fight. Yeah. Between um, very powerful entities. Yes. Very, very powerful. Like the yeah. stakes are, are definitely raised. Yep. Um, and, uh, you get Harry and Ramirez dueling the other two yep. vampires, which yep. is really good. Um, but, we see, uh, uh, outsider too. Yes. We, we see an outsider. I think yeah. that, is that the first time that we really like see the I, presence of an outsider? I think so. Yeah. I think it's, it's hinted at and proven guilty. Cause when he goes to Arctis tour, yes, there's yes. like the big scarecrow mm -hmm. looking guy, but I don't think we know that yeah. it's an outsider at yeah. that point. Um, but yeah, the book has so many amazing things. At the end, Harry, uh, even though Lashiel's dead, she leaves him with the guitar yes, riff that she taught mind. him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's so cool. She leaves him more than that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then we get small favor. Small favor. Um, this is the uh, this is Morgan... pr Prithee with uh, donut with no sprinkles or sprinkles. Oh, or the is, is this donut is... with sprinkles? Okay, I might be thinking of maybe. Oh, I'm thinking of turncoat. Sorry, mm -hmm. my bad. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. This is where Michael gets hurt. Yes, this okay. is where Michael gets hurt. Yeah. Um, he goes up on the uh, on the helicopter. Yeah, he gets raised up. Yeah. Because what? How did? How was it gonna happen? Because the the um Viking girl, what's her name? Uh, Marcone's right hand chick. Oh, guard. Guard was up there, and she like Harry was gonna send somebody else up, mm -hmm. right? And he's like, no, it's not his time, or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, she said. Or was it, it was it was Harry where she's like, it's not his time to die, because she's like she's a chooser of the slain basically. Yeah, she. Oh, I yeah, I forget exactly it's how okay. it all I played mean, it's, out, it's but been she a long time she since gave him that one too. I do just remember her saying like, it's not his time to die, like very vehemently off the helicopter. Yeah, I just can't well, who it was. well, Michael. So I remember 
I think she says it later there's after. There's a question where like Harry like doesn't know who to send up first. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 And guard, guard was like up in the helicopter, mm-hmm. I think. And and as Michael was going up, she like gave him a look, and yes. that's when he knew. Oh, okay. And he was like, no. Yeah. And then Michael just gets shot. Okay. Um. That must have been it. And yeah, there was there was oh, a lot was, of like that whole scenario. Like, I think the most. Like seeing Michael get hurt is so sad, but when when Harry shows up at the hospital and sees Charity, mm-hmm. it's like I was crying, dude, just yep. viciously crying. Yeah, it was like terrified for Harry. Yeah, like, what is she gonna say? What is she gonna do? Yeah, you know? and this is where we get uh, family stays yeah. because he's like, I don't think he's like, I just got their husband and father like basically That's killed. Right. And she says, "Listen, yeah, family stays." He's like, he's like, I should go, and she's like, "Family stays." Yep. Yeah, and it's kind of this. Uh, it's like the official, like Harry's part of the yep. family kind of thing. Yep. Um, small favor. I, I, this isn't one of my favorite books to be honest. Yeah. Um, even when we did our reread, uh, recently for the podcast, I was I was hoping that I would get a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. I was hoping that I would read through it and be like, actually, I love this book. Yeah. Um, but I think it's still near the bottom yeah. of the ranking for me. That's fine. Um, That's fair. But there are good scenes in it. There's good scenes with uh, with Mab. Yep. And um, yeah, we get Elder a, Gruff. Elder Gruff, <laughs> yes, Elder Gruff is yeah. great. Um, and of course the the whole like the whole jelly donut, whatever it is. Yeah. I, I forget. I still think like what a donut with frosting of white. Of favor, dude. <laughs> like, I know. Do like do we ever figure out what the reason was for that? Well, yeah, because he because Gruff was sent to kill him, and so he needed to get Gruff away, and he had one favor that he could ask the summer court, and oh, so he used okay, his yeah. favor to get Gruff to away. Go get it. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. But then why did so then why did Gruff forgive the debt though? Because when he's still want to kill Harry, what, because what it, happened that because he could only there was like a window? there was a there was a time he window. could only okay. for that day was he allowed to oh, kill Harry. Okay, yeah. And so the donut store doesn't open until the morning, gotcha. and so yeah, he had I need to, to do a reread. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Turncoat. I just reread this. Nice. I haven't read that one for a while, dude. I. Love this book. Um, there's so many good moments. I mean, everything, Morgan showing up at his door and just being like, like trusting Harry to be the one that which like so, saves which him. Which is so wild to think about because mm-hmm. like, but, but here's the thing. Like, I think Morgan's just, like, we've talked about this. He has these values that like mm-hmm. are just ingrained. Mm-hmm. Nothing can change that. Yeah. But at the same time, like I think somewhere deep internally, like he sees oh, Harry. Yeah. And he like just understands that like he's a good person, even though mm-hmm. he'll never tell you that, he'll never mm-hmm. admit it. Still, always think he's a bad guy, but he's like, this is somebody I can go to and trust. Yeah, which is really cool. And and he even tells Harry at the end of yeah, the... yeah, that's the I was just gonna talk about the ending. That's yeah, yeah. He he's like um he's like, do you know why I didn't tell um anybody about Molly yeah. and or and he's like, or do you know why I came to you? He's like, because I knew. I knew that you know what it's like to be mistreated yes. by the council. Yeah. And Harry's just like, oh my God, that's like as close as I'm ever going to get to an to apology. An apology. Yeah. And then we get like a micro fiction. That's right. That, yeah, that we got to read. Yeah. Um, and that, uh, that was excellent because it was Morgan's journal. And he was basically saying that he knew Harry was innocent all along, but he didn't know if Nemesis had gotten oh, to Harry. That's right. And right. so he had to keep like yep. prodding Harry. To make sure, make yeah. sure, yeah. To make sure, yeah. Crazy. Um, so we get the misfeen, right? That's what starts this whole. Yes, we get the. Uh... The what's his name? Yeah, little... the mist fiend. Yeah, um, caused by that little prick. What's his name? The little paper Peabody. Spy. Peabody. Peabody. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Wizard Peabody. Yep. Yeah. Um yeah, this okay, yeah, this this, this yeah. scene with Morgan. Yes. Um so he tells he tells Harry that he Lucio was the one that he had found over the dead body and he like yep. got her back to her room yep. and he like took the blame yeah. for it. Um <coughs> and uh yeah, I just love uh Dresden, he said quietly. Yeah. I didn't tell anyone about Molly, what she tried to do to Anna. I, 
I didn't tell. Because remember, Molly yes. had yep. tried to do My, some mind yep. stuff to Lucio yep. to find out what was going on with her. Yep. Um, I, I stared at him, unable to speak. His eyes became cloudy. Do you know why I didn't? Why I came to you? I shook my head. Because I knew, he whispered. He lifted his right hand and I gripped it hard. I knew that you knew how it felt to be an innocent man hounded by the mm. wardens. It was the closest he'd ever come to saying that he'd been wrong about me. He died less than a minute later. Ah, oh. oh. my heart is so good. My it's heart. so good. I love. There's also a bunch of like funny moments. Like I love. Uh, I love. Uh, oh, the whole scene where they're in the Harry's apartment is that they're like like everybody keeps fighting everybody like yeah he keeps coming home and they're in different states yeah. of like killing <laughs> yeah, each other right. basically yeah yeah um, there's there's also a scene where he takes them out to his storage unit yeah. and it's like a Faraday cage like yes, a magical I Faraday that. cage yeah. what isn't that where I meet the the summoner dude too yes yeah, okay. yes Bender Bender yeah um and the Binder Binder yeah Binder. you're right and uh. So they're they're in Harry's thing, and Molly's got a shotgun. Yep. They have a way to the never never in the corner. Yeah, and and, and then, uh, what's his name? He's in a in a wheelchair. He's, he's in, in a, a wheelchair, wheelchair. <laughs> and he's sitting there Morgan's with a juice box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I just love I yeah. love that picture yep. so much. Yep. Um, the other uh, the other great scene from it. I mean, God, there's so many, but yeah. the other the other great scene is harry seeing all the journals that go way back when ebenezer's like this is my master's yeah. journal and his yep. master's journal and yep. his and he's like someday you'll write your own journals yeah. and we're all kind of assuming that we are reading dresden's yeah. journals that he wrote someday <laughs> mm -hmm. um but uh but yeah then the other great one is molly telling harry um she's like like morgan's in the car and Harry and Molly are walking out to the car and Molly's like, I wanted to kill him. Like I, yeah. she's like, that's not what a good person does. A good person doesn't like, like I genuinely wanted to kill him. Yeah. And Harry like grabs her by the shoulders and he's like, that is to be human. Yeah. He's yeah. like the, he's like the monsters are the ones who act on there. Yeah. Their... And there's so many like movies and, and different like, I think Spider-Man's got a quote on it. Like, mm -hmm. with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. There's another one that I was told a long time ago that's something like, you know, it's basically it's like, you know, tendencies are there, right? It's whether mm -hmm. you act on them or not. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I just, I, I love, I love that scene too because it's just like, Molly's there like, there's got to be something wrong with yeah. me yeah. if I... It's like, no, you're just, a, you're, no, you're a person, dude. Yep. People hate, it's, it's in them. It will always yeah. be in them. It's whether or not you choose to act you know, on it. Act on it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Changes. Oh, good lord. Good jeez. Good lord almighty. There's so much to say. This could be an entire episode right mm -hmm. here. Oh, jeez. I mean, I I used the knife. I killed the girl. I I saved the kid. I won, a war. War. Like, yeah, uh, won a war. Like God forgive me. God like forgive that me. that whole thing. Yeah. When I was when I was looking through Reddit for quotes for the tattoo, everybody was telling me to get that one and i'm like that like i love that quote yeah. it's like really specific to the dresden files yeah um so i don't know if anybody else would like get it yeah that's that's we talked about yeah that too. i even thought about the like the kill a mouse quote yeah like just right that, but i was like nobody would understand that unless i right. read the books right 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 um yeah we get all of them turning into dogs yeah and that's we get cool. mouse talking yeah. to them the fairy godmother yeah i think that's kind of a cool I don't know. I feel like like this whole entire book was like such like a nervous, mm -hmm. just like just anxiety dream. ride. The whole the whole yeah. thing was just a fever dream, right? Yeah. Like everybody's terrified. Like there's this thing happening. We have to get there. We have to stop it. We have to save the girl. We have to save the, you know, Susan. All this stuff. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. But then like here comes a little Nanchi, and she's like, oh, okay, I can be the fairy godmother, right? And right. She's like just being silly <laughs> and like, you want some armor? Here you go. You right. Know, shit like that. It's just yeah. kind of kind of a weird like contrast yeah it was a good it, it broke was, it up a yeah bit. it was a good like yeah. comedic relief yeah. from all the like super serious stuff yeah. that's happening um but like besides besides all the stuff at the end there's like uh harry's duel with uh ariana ortega yes. yep um where he like 
makes like a thing of mist. Yeah, like they're they're fire and ice meat, yeah. and it makes this mist. And then he like freezes her inside and, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh god, that was good. And then he like pulls down the earth on top of her. That was awesome. He also has another spell, another earth spell, where there's like all these vampires in front of him, and he just goes boom yeah. and like pulls gravity cool down. Magic. We even see him touch a ley line. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I think that's when he did that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. And that's like that was a cool thing because like we see him. You know, leylands are ever present, mm-hmm. right, in the series. They're we see him talk about them all the time. They're there. They're just their source of magic. They weave throughout the world. But you know, like I think he's even talked about like touching a leyland is crazy. That magic is super powerful and changing. And he touches it, and you can even like in his head, you can hear like this was it was like a firestorm. He's like, I mm-hmm. didn't know where I was. I didn't know what was going on, but I tried to control it, and he pulled that channel magic it. off. Yeah, yeah, channel it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was that was incredible. There's so much like. This and Deadbeat yeah. would be like the two coolest Resident Files movies. Yeah. Like, oh, dude, Changes would by far be the best best movie ever. Yeah. That or maybe Battleground, but I think I don't know. Nobody has enough money to do that movie. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly, I honestly think like if they were to make just like a trilogy of yeah. movies, do Deadbeat yeah. have Molly become his apprentice mm-hmm. in Deadbeat? Then go to changes, do changes, and then do battleground. Yeah, like, that would be crazy. That would be like three back to back. It'd like, break the world. Oh my I'm gosh! Convinced. It'd yeah, break the world. Those movies would do so well. Yeah. Oh man. Um, but yeah, there's there's so much good stuff in this book. We've we've talked about it so much on the podcast. Um, part of me doesn't even really know where to begin, but I always go back to harry on the steps of chichen itza yeah. after everything yes, has happened and he's just like holding his yep. daughter yep like that and they oh. say doesn't ebenezer show up right and mm. he says he says there's a quote like I, I don't remember how it starts but he's like you know we'll let the world burn and we'll roast marshmallows on it yeah. harry harry says that yeah um, yeah that's what yeah. i mean i just yeah. can't remember what ebenezer said to him before that right yeah he's like he's like you'll He's like, you're gonna set the world on fire, Hoss, or something. Or he's like, I don't know, something like that. Yeah, and he's, and he's like, like yeah, me, me and, and the, the girl will roast marshmallows yeah. if it happens. Yeah, yeah, and then of course there's like the battle where like Ebenezer crazy. like pulls out his staff. He's just like, yeah, Ooh, just, just like council, dude. Yeah, yeah just yeah, like knocks all the guys out. That's when like, we first see the black know, staff. Black staff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and what that power is, kind of. Yeah. And then one more thing about oh, that book I want yeah, to say. Maybe you know this quote. It's probably at the very end, but it's about when the curse was stopped right and yes. it's like every mother you know every something if you could find that that's a mm-hmm. really good one really good one everything changed the night the red court died it made the history books first for the unexplained destruction of several structures in in chichen itza a thousand years of jungle hadn't managed to bring the place down but half an hour of slugfest between practitioners who know what they're doing can leave city blocks in ruins it was later attributed to an extremely powerful localized earthquake. No one could explain all the corpses, some of them with dental work featuring techniques last used a hundred years mm-hmm. before. Some whose hearts had been violently torn from their chests and whose bodies had been affected by some kind of mutation that rendered their bones almost unrecognizable as human. Fewer than 5% of them were ever identified, and those were all people who had abruptly gone missing in the past 10 or 15 years. No explanation was ever offered for such a confluence of missing persons, though theories abounded, none of them true. Um, And then he said, Second, it made the books because of all the sudden disappearances or apparent outright murders of important officials, because all the red court people are dying, like all over the world. and politics and yeah government yeah yeah finally it made the books in the supernatural community as the night of bad dreams before the sunset the paranet was buzzing with activity with men and women scattered over half the world communicating about the vivid and troubling dreams they'd had pregnant women and mothers who had recently delivered had been hardest hit several had to be hospitalized and sedated but everyone with a smidge of talent who was sleeping at the time was troubled by dreams the general theme was always the same dead children the world in flames terror and death spreading across the globe in an unstoppable wave destroying anything resembling order or civilization 
Um, I don't remember what happened when the ritual went off. There's a blank spot in my head about two minutes wide. I had no desire whatsoever to find out what was there. Yeah, That's really interesting. I yeah. wonder if we'll ever get to see what what that was maybe yeah, I mean, just for won't. harry it makes sense why because mm-hmm. he just you know yeah just done the deed but for some reason that mother's thing really hit me pregnant women and mothers mm-hmm. new mothers or whatever because it's like yeah you know that was that was susan right yeah uh the next thing i remember is standing outside the temple with maggie in my arms wrapped in the heavy feather cloak her mother had left behind yeah. she was shivering and cr- crying quietly but only in sheer reaction and weariness now rather than terror yeah i just i love this moment where it's like the last moment we get until skin game where he's like actually holding like holding maggie and just being like there with her yeah uh ghost story um Spencer doesn't like it, everybody. I don't like it <laughs> at all, really. I There's one scene that I like, and it's more of a monologue, and yeah. it's monologue about home mm-hmm. when he's he's like visualizing his bullet or whatever and yeah. he's needing to use a memory. Yep. And he, he uses... Good or morning. no, no, he, he's calling all of the ghosts home. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Yep. And he's going through, like, I used the memory of myself like curled up by the fire, and yeah. I used, like the little creek that my bed made when I got out of it in the morning and yeah. like that, like all of these little pictures of like what makes something home and Oh God, it's such a good, such a good monologue. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. What about you? We just read ghost story recently. Yeah. Do you have any yeah. No, it's, it's like, from... it's one of my, I, I really enjoy this book and I, I like to, I it's for me, it's kind of set aside right from the series. Like obviously it's part of the series and it's important, but mm-hmm. I think I just really like to peek behind the curtain it's you yeah. know it's this we get to see kind of a other world you know the other side of things that we hear about in every book and that we see you know parts of in every book but like in this book harry is in the other world mm-hmm. and he's learning how to adapt how to figure out what to do uh we've been a lot of awesome characters like um i'm gonna forget his name shame on me but the the uh ghost that guards mortimer's house the main like sir stewart sir, sir stewart yeah, yeah. Um, he's an awesome character. Uh, we see Harry learn how to be ghosts. Like that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Like, just like yeah. just teaching him, like just be, learning be a new magic. Yeah, be on the sidewalk. You know, right. it's like what the heck? How do I do this? Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's awesome. And then the fight with Corpse Taker and Molly, by far my favorite scene. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. When uh, when Molly's like, "Get out of my head, bitch!" and like, mm-hmm. yeah, her butts her and gets in there, and they're having this battle. Uh, and yeah, that's when Harry finds out what happened with between molly and him but yeah that's not even like that's that's a big part but i think Mm -hmm. the battle is what like really got me i was like dude yeah like molly went to bat for you yeah yeah the battles the battle's super cool i did love um obviously harry finding out like what happened that was a great reveal but uh mortimer yeah mortimer i he really came around yeah he really really showed his uh his true colors in this book yeah. and we get to get a better peek into who yeah, he is as who a he person. really is yeah yeah cold days another one of my yeah look at these you can tell top three you can yeah tell. yeah you can tell that i have matter of fact i wonder yeah, you better open and see i what wonder those what are. these are because yeah. i bet these are some of my favorite yep. moments yep oh god there's so many so many good quotes look you literally <laughs> yeah i have an arrow i have an arrow yep. cold days is where uh we yeah. end up on the island we do we do go there but that was uh that was that was back in turncoat i guess that's another thing i forgot to mention about turncoat is that's where he first does the ritual no i mean when molly gets turned to the yes yeah this yeah. this is where molly gets turned okay. into the into the winter, winter lady, lady yeah. yeah and that was devastating i remember the first time i read it i was like what the scene, the scene between yeah I guess we can talk about this now because we're mm-hmm. not going in order. But yeah. so shortly after this happens, everything's done. It's played out, right? It's it's uh, finished. And Harry, you know, I think as of right now, they're like mortal, right? Map can die. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's Halloween night. They can die. It's Halloween night, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> Harry takes a gun to Map's head. Yeah. And he says, I can't remember what he says, but it was fucking awesome, whatever it yeah. was. And uh, Map's like, listen, she... You know, if if Mab is gone, who's going to be the next Mab? And he realizes it's it's going to be Molly. It's going to be Molly, and 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 Mab's like she, it won't work. Yeah, like she can't. She's like, well, she she's will not, not be able to handle it. Yeah, she's yeah. not capable. And Harry's like, fuck. Yeah, you know, super sad. 
Oh, dude. Yeah, it's... But just that scene where he, like, walks up, come here, talk to me, and he just puts a gun to her head. I'm like, holy mm-hmm. crap, that's never happened before and never happen again. Yep. And and you can tell how, like, fiercely he... Fiercely. He would have killed Molly. her yeah. in a heartbeat. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, if he had thought... The only reason why he didn't is because she made him realize that she would be the next map, and she yep. couldn't do it. Yeah. She's too new. She's not capable. Right. Yeah. Ah, uh, it's such a it's such a brutal moment because it feels like we get Molly as an apprentice. Then for a couple books, she's kind of learning. Then she yep, just helping, starts. Yeah, she just starts to really be there, a part of the team, mm-hmm. right? And then she gets stolen. Yeah, stolen. She gets stolen, and then not only that, but like she like in in turncoat and changes. Yeah. She's like just starting to become like good yeah. at what she does, and then Harry dies. Yeah. And then we get Ghost Story, where she becomes like the rag lady, yeah. this, the rag lady, which yep. is like this absolute, just well, yeah, like she, scary she, she version of herself. It. She even tells Harry in Ghost Story, she's like, "Listen, like when you died, everything changed. Mm-hmm. Like people, the Fulmer are here now. Yeah, like I had to be the person to scare everybody else. Right, like, that was the only way I could make this work. And she did, but yeah. she didn't know how to do it. Right. And then the Lanon, she was like, "Come on, I'll, t- I'll show you. Yeah, I'll teach you how to do that. No exactly. Big deal. Yeah." And so now we get to cold days and it's like she's kind of just starting to feel like herself again. Yeah. And Harry's like joking and laughing with her yeah, and like she's doing it's, okay. She's yeah, doing she's okay. Doing and then she gets turned into the winter lady and it's yeah. just like, oh my God. And we really, we really don't get her back there's a short story where we see her, and then we don't get her back until Battleground. Yeah. There's one short story that kind of, I would say it's her interim shortly yeah. after she's turned, but yeah, yeah, we don't really see her until Battleground. Yeah. But I will say... We don't see her at all in Skin Game. Not at all in Skin Game. I will say, though, uh, this is, you know, this will cover the rest of these books, but Map takes good care of her. Yeah, I would say so. I think her education is kind of a brutal one, brutal but I think... and violent, but I think that Map, like... I think Mab gives her what she can take. Yeah. She doesn't break her. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the Lanon she kind of sets her up. Oh, for totally. That. Yeah, that's the whole point. That's yeah. when Harry, that's why Harry realized like where will the mantle go? And it's like, oh, it'll go to the person Who, that's been groomed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who who's yeah. the person who's that's the been person spending the most yep. time with a fucking fairy? Yeah. Like, oh yeah. god. Yeah. Oh, it's such a it's such a great moment, yeah. but like a a devastating moment. And it's just Oh god, I feel so it's a bad. Lot. I feel so a bad. Lot of for crazy Molly. emotions going on there. Yeah. And then not only that, but like Sarissa gets the summer lady yes. mantle. And we still haven't seen that play out no. really yeah. yet. Yeah. But um but yeah, there's there's a another lot of, yeah, another yeah, thing before that is to his fix. Yes. Um, the, the fight with fix. The fight with fix, yeah. yeah. There's I can't remember it's is it Sarissa or is it so so Lily. So, oh, no, okay, so Maeve is, like, so Harry's there to stop what's going on, right? And Fix and Sarissa have been lied to by Maeve. And Fix Maeve, and Lily. Fix and Lily, sorry, sorry, thank you. Mm-hmm. Have been lied to by Maeve, and uh, during that fight, Maeve has been, like, you know, puppeteering, puppeteering words, mm-hmm. right? And then uh, Harry, how, how does it go? Harry, Harry he, basically protects protects fix from lily yes lily's about to burn scorched earth yeah like, kill everything yeah and then uh he like puts up like a and shield then, yeah and then fix is like look at me yeah look who's burned I'm yeah fine harry's burned like he, yeah he protected me yeah and lily's like what what and he's what? like who's who's the one that's been giving yes. us all the information yeah. like it's been made and then harry's like listen she like like, because I've been talking about Nemesis, too. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. if it was to enter, she could lie. She could lie to you. Mm-hmm. Like, listen, where all this started. And she finally realizes yeah. what's going on. Crazy. Crazy. Oh, it's such a good scene. The whole the whole climax there is so, yeah. is so fantastic. Yes. And there's just, like, there's so much, like, mystery to what's going on. Like, Harry knows that, like, a he it's described to him as a bomb. Yeah. He's like, a bomb is going to go off, but we don't know when yeah. or where or like and even if it's like already confusing thing from bob too mm-hmm. when they're on the island he's like yeah the 
the bombs being placed from the future, but it's in like it was yeah, crazy. Like fourth, they they could have stuff. Yeah, they could have thrown a rock three days ago and it lands yeah, today. Yeah, and like, then it bom- like the yeah. bomb blows up. And even and in the beginning too, like Molly's like, listen, I went out to the island and it's you know there's there's a lot of energy building up there, and it's like if Chichen Itza was a you mm-hmm. know something like this will be a Hiroshima, like right. this is going to be a nuclear. It's going to take out half the coast. Yeah, or whatever she says. Like, yeah, huge, you know, yeah. world ending bomb. Right, which is crazy. Yeah, there is... The whole book's a race against time, dude. Yeah, it's it's a race yeah. against time, and there's, like, this mystery of, like, figuring out... Like, what the, like what's going what on? Like, what do you what? mean? Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Like, and, and then they get the whole Merlin thing, where Merlin is building the island yeah, in four dimensions. Yeah, which is crazy. And it's like, what is going but on? The, <laughs> the island is, like, a... I think the interaction between Bob and him were kind of funny. Oh, it was so good when he's got Bob and yeah, his like, Bob. Ivy. Like, Harry, Harry, help me. Yeah. And he's like, wait, wait, no. No, no I'm he's, fine. He's showing me. He's, he's showing, showing me. me. And then Harry's like, and Bob's like, okay, let me dumb it down like 275 more times for you. Yes. So you can understand what's going on. I yes. Like, exactly. Yeah. He's like, he had to dumb it down for me. I have to dumb it down even more yeah. for you. Like, yeah. Oh, it's so good. I think, I think I tagged this page just yeah. because I like this quote. Yeah. Uh, Taking a beating well is not for amateurs. You have to get started early, maybe by getting beaten up a lot as a child in school. Then you refine your raw talent by taking more beatings as you get older. Generally, you can seek out almost any crew of athletic types, and you'll find several willing to oblige you (laughs) under one guise or another. True craftsmen then seek out gifted individuals with a particular skill set (laughs) to deliver the most skilled and professional beatings. I have a particular set of skills. I will find. That's how you learn to fight really. You take beatings and you get tougher and if you don't if you don't start avoiding all the fights, you continue taking beatings until you learn how it's done yeah. or they kill you. Some guys <laughs> are born lucky with Jeez. mad natural fighting skills and they hardly ever take a beating, but that's never been me. I've had to learn the hard way. Like every other kind of pain, beatings are educational. <laughs> Jeez. I love it. Yep. Um of course, we get the whole, like, beginning thing where Harry's like, it's my first day in the prison yard, and he goes yeah. in Frigga, and he, like, turns the Fae right, into yeah, an yeah, icicle. Yeah, birthday party, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was cool, because Sar- Sarissa, that was Sarissa, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's like, you can't you can't draw blood, you cannot draw blood here. And uh, yeah. and then Harry freezes whatever blood was going to fall, like, he attacks, or just, yeah, he just freezes them. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that's a cool fight with the red cap. Fuck yeah. that guy. Yeah, dude. We get a uh, we get Andy showing up completely naked in Butter's apartment. Yeah, that's right. I yep. Forgot about that. I'm always uh, I'm always down for a naked Andy. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um, yeah, and and Bob has like the um, he's got the he's like Butter's gave me the World Wide Web. He's just yep, walking he's got on the, like five different screens. Yep. He's yep like, Harry, yep. Harry, Harry, look at this. Look at this. Yep. Yep. Butter's yep. gave me the internet. Yeah. Can you do that for me? Right. He's like, we've got broadband. Yeah, we've got broadband. That's it. That's it. We've got broadband, Harry. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, Thomas comes back. This, this is just a great, yeah, like... It's a, um, it's a big... There's a lot of lot of stuff that goes on in this book. Yeah, I've, I've often said that, that Cold Days is like my Desert Island book, yeah, just because yeah. there's so, so much, much that in happens. it. Yep. You read it um, over and over again and, and find new stuff. Yeah. yeah, like even when we discussed it, it was our episode before... Yep. Or wait, no, we haven't gone on to no, skin game no, yet. No, yeah, yeah. We're not there yet. So we just did cold <laughs> yeah. days, and that uh, that was a great discussion and yeah. a long discussion, just because we have there's so much, there's there, so much to yeah. so much to talk about um, in the book because it's huge. like you it's you lot. start out in Arctis Tor, you come back, you have to solve this whole like fourth dimension mystery, yeah, which is crazy, <laughs> and then you yeah. have to like go to the island and figure all that out and then you have to figure out what's going on with the fairies and it's just like there's a lot a lot of stuff in this book yeah. and yeah i remember it taking me forever to read the first time um you just keep to going like back. get through well yeah. it, it was it, i remember specifically when i read this it just felt like a fucking long book yeah. it felt like the longest yeah. book in the series yeah. up to that point that's fair yeah okay skin game all right the heist the heist. the heist. Yes, we get a lot of uh, Nicodemus. Nicodemus, demons, coins, point. baby, Magog. Anytime he shows up, it's always a crazy time, dude. Yeah, he's. I I honestly believe Nicodemus is the best villain. Oh, I like, would agree. 
I He's think, by far the most powerful. Hands yeah. Down. I think, like, when you think about Nicodemus, you just think of, like, some guy. Like, he's not, like, the skinwalker or something. No, no, but he's there's a... there's a, so cunning. And... There's one... There's a point in time where Harry goes to meet with uh, Odin. What's yeah. his name? V- uh, Vaterung. Vaterung. Yeah. And Vaterung's talking about his coin. And and Harry's like, uh, so what's his, what's his game? What's he got? And, and he's like, yeah, his coin is like the master of shadows. Like, anything mm-hmm. said within the grasp of a shadow can be yeah. heard and he's like he's been doing this for thousands of years mm-hmm. right like forever yeah uh, you're not gonna get ahead of him right yeah. unless you know of unless you figure something out. figure something out yeah. exactly uh but still to say yeah he's been doing it longer than anybody has ever yeah you know there's no wizards alive maybe except for merlin but he's got to be one of the oldest most cunning people there is in this world yeah 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 and, and that's that's a great reveal too, because that that Vaterung scene scene at the end of it is where Harry's like, "I gotta make he, a call." Yeah, he's like, "I gotta make <laughs> yeah. a call," and he, yeah. he goes and he finds Goodman Gray. Yep, and then we get the whole twist later on. The yep. game over, man. Yep. Game, game over, over man. man. Exactly, that's a good one. But yeah, the the scene that always gets me in this book. There's a couple of them kind of back to back, and they all involve Michael mm. and Harry. Matter of fact, is it the same? T- it might be the same scene. Harry shows up at Michael's house, oh. and he's like, "I think I'm lost. Yeah, and I need help. Yep. And before Michael's like working out, right, or something. Or... Well, no, or Mike. The... He he answers the door, and oh, and Harry's like almost crying. Yeah, yeah okay. and he's okay. like, he's like, I think I'm, I think I'm lost. I all think this I need stuff. Your help. Yeah, and it and before this, it was um he hadn't really interacted with Michael at all because... Didn't he have, like, what about the broken wrist? The was, broken wrist? Was that not in this thing where Murphy gets hurt? That is, yeah. Okay. She, she gets hurt... Because Harry has, like, a broken wrist, and he goes to Michael, and he's like, I don't know what's going yes. on. Michael, like, binds it for yes, him. Yes, that sets, is the same the scene. Okay. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right. But, yeah, so he goes to the carpenter's house, and because... He's been avoiding Michael because he doesn't want to tell him that Molly's the yeah, freaking that, exactly, summer exactly. or the winter, winter lady. lady yeah. And so he uh, he finally goes there. He's like, I think I'm lost. I'm I'm not on help. the right path. Like, I, need, I need your help. And Michael just says, come in, my friend. Yep. And like lets him in and that like, right helps there, him with come his in, wrist. My friend is yep. like just, that could be on Michael's placard. Yeah. It's like, it's just him. Yeah. It's like exactly how I describe Michael. It's so good. It's so good. Um. Yeah, and then so Michael Michael's finally in the carpenter house. Yep. Or Harry is. Or yeah, yeah Harry is. Yep. And Maggie comes down yes. the stairs. Do you want to come see my room? She's like, Do you want to come God, see my room? It just and then, melts me, dude. Yes. And she's like talking. Like, sure, sure. She's like talking. I would love to like, see your room. She's like, Molly says that you can't be here because you fight the monsters mm-hmm. and you're busy fighting the monsters. He's like, but Charity's husband fights monsters all the time, and he's here every yeah. night. And it's just like, oh yeah. my god! Doesn't she say like, "Do you want to be my dad?" Yes, that's it. She says, "Do you want to be my want... dad?" And he's like, yes. He cries. Oh he's my like, yes, I god! Would, I would like that very much. I think is what he says. I would like that very much. Oh, it's so it's brutal. Yeah. It gets me every time. Yep. I remember when I was first reading this book. It was back when audiobooks were on CDs. Mm-hmm. And I had I had the CD, and I remember it was like chapter like eighteen yeah. or like or a uh, segment eighteen, segment or whatever, 18 yeah. on the disc. Yeah, yeah. And I just remember I would like I would go just back to eighteen rewind, rewind, and just like yeah. re-listen to it yeah. like every time. I was just like, oh my god, that's so brutal. Yep. Um, and then you get Harry like reading her the book in bed, yes. and they fall asleep yeah. together, and Mouse is like curled up at the bottom. Yep. And I'm just like, oh my god, it's just like it does things to my heart. Yeah. Like, oh Jesus, that's, that's a good way to describe it. Like tugs at the heart. For yeah. Sure. Um, another thing yeah. about this book too is mm-hmm. like Harry is now the Winter Knight, right? Like that happens back, I think, which book before changes. I mean, he becomes the Winter Knight in changes. Oh, in changes, yeah. early in changes. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. how he gets the power to do that. Right, okay. right. So with the Winter Knight comes the urges that Lloyd Slade have, right? They're mm-hmm. they're primal. They're you know, just yeah. a very, very urgent thing that happens. And so mm-hmm. there's scenes like when they're scoping out the butcher, the butchery place where they're going to meet Nicodemus with, he's sitting in the car with uh, Murphy. Mm-hmm. And he starts like thinking about, he sees like Hannah, I think Hannah Asher. And he starts thinking about something. I can't remember what yeah. it was, but he, 
you know, the car turns ice cold, right? Oh, yeah. And he's, like, dealing with these just violent urges. And Murphy's like, Harry, yeah. Harry, what's going on? Yeah. And he has to, like, really, reset. like, reset himself. And yeah. so, like, any time where he's, like, battling, because he has a lot of inner monologue about mm -hmm. those times where he's, like, yeah, I gotta shut this up. There's a time, I don't know which book, but I know what happens, where he's lifting weights with Michael, mm. right? Because he's, like, he's lifting, like, crazy weight. Mm -hmm. And Michael's like, yeah, how many reps are you at? And he's like, oh, or Harry's like, how many reps are you at? Like, oh, you've done, like, 60? He's like, what? It's like 230 pounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, think that's peace talks. Okay, yeah, yeah, like yeah. the next book. Mm -hmm. Anyways, though, so him fighting urges is always cool because, like, we know Harry is such a gray person. Like, right, he has, he has some hatred, some evil in him, mm -hmm. right? Like, that's the whole premise. Like, he's always trying to figure out what's right and what's appropriate for certain situations. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I just like when he's, you know, he has to really step back and be like, okay, how do I be the person that I want to be here? Yeah. I, I love those reflective moments yeah. where he's just like, he has to like understand what's going on with yeah, him in has, that and moment. And that's the thing. It's self-understanding, which mm -hmm. is huge. Like I wish I knew myself better, you know? It's right. Like, I know. It's like, it's like, I God, I wish I could do that, you know? Yeah. I wish I knew myself that well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what other there's the fight scene. I mean, yeah, in, obviously in, in the, the Jedi. Yeah, yep, that thing. And then I was also thinking like all the you know the ice block room, like mm -hmm. all those rooms. You yeah, have to go the through. ice block room. That was um, great. The room of fire with Hannah. That was mm -hmm. cool. Uh, and then when you know the the flip happens, right, and we see that Hannah's now taking the coin by Lashiel. Yeah, and so Lashiel's there, and she's like, ah, "I knew you once, lover, or something, whatever she says." Right? It's like. He's like, no way. And then, of course, Magog turns into to just a big battle where Harry's got to really think outside the box. Drop the rocks on Hannah because she's too young and ignorant to know what she's doing. Yeah. And then Magog, I don't really remember. Oh, yeah, the Janosqua. That's mm -hmm. another thing. Yeah, the Janosqua. That's Mag Magog, yeah. Yep. There, there's a great scene. We didn't talk about the, what about the earlier Janosqua in the books earlier? Where Harry oh, yeah, the Bigfoot. stops on the sidewalk because he saw, he opened his sight and he like, I had to keep doing Roman numerals. He's like, I'm going to lose my mind. If I oh, the Skinwalker. Mind. Skinwalker, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nine plus whatever it mm -hmm. is, you know? Yeah, that was, that was a crazy Do you know what book moment. that was? That was Turncoat. Turncoat, okay. And he has to go to Billy and yeah. George's place. Yep, I yeah. need a quiet, dark room. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. There, There's a moment he has with, uh, with Uriel that I really loved where it's after Uriel's gotten his jet plane back. He's yep. gotten yeah, his, he's gotten his, his grace, grace back, back. yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, also that scene, too, when Michael, he's like, if you leave them be, I'll step out the fence. Yeah, he says, look at you, got your jet plane back. Undamaged, he said, Michael is a good man. Best I know, would you really have nuked Gray if he'd come in the yard? Earl's like, I'm glad he didn't try. <laughs> um, okay, so Harry says, and the sword breaking, I asked, did you plan that, too? I don't plan anything, Uriel said. I don't really do anything, not unless one of the fallen crosses the line. No, what is your job then? Uriel says, I make it possible for mortals to make a choice. Miss mm. Murphy chose to act in a way that would shatter the sword. Mr. Butters chose to act with a selfless selflessness and courage that provided that proved him worthy to be a true knight. Mm. And you chose to believe that a ruined broken sword could make a difference. <laughs> the sum of those acts created a sword that is in some ways greater than when, when it was yes. broken. I didn't choose for it to do that, I said. Seriously, there might be some sort of copyright infringement going on here. <laughs> Uriel smiled again. I must admit, he said, I never first saw that particular form of faith being expressed under my purview. Belief, belief in a freaking movie, I asked him. Belief in a story, Uriel said, of good confronting evil, of light overcoming darkness, mm. of love transcending hate. Ah. He tilted his head. Isn't that where all faith begins? I grunted and thought about it. Huh. Uriel smiled. A lot of Star Wars fans out there, I noted. Maybe more Star Wars fans than Catholics. I liked the music, he said. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. I so good. That. That's it's awesome. Like, oh. Awesome. Yeah, I can't wait. We have Skin Game coming up very, very soon on the podcast. Yeah. And I... I am so I am so excited for yeah. this book, and then we get to uh, then we get to peace talks and those and, are kind of yeah those should be meshed together yeah for sure these will be together, um, and guys what we'll be doing on uh, if any of you are still here watching this <laughs> um, what what we'll be doing for the podcast is we'll do a skin game, 
And then we have uh, Brief Cases is the side stories that come between Skin Game and Peace Talks. Um, so we'll do those. And then we'll do Peace Talks, and that'll be fine. And then we'll do Battleground, but we're going to split this up in half. Yeah, and as so, it should be. Yeah, yeah. we're going to find... We're going to find a point somewhere in the middle here that's like a good stopping yeah. point. Maybe the the death of Murphy. Um, yeah. That might be a good stopping point, yeah. depending on if that's like halfway through. Yeah. Or yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's That would be good. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, we're going to find a good stopping point for it. And we're going to do two episodes. I'm going to try to get the Dresden Files podcast on that one with us. Sweet um one of their one of their guys was on for blood rights when we did that book um so hopefully that'll be fun and that'll be a big like kind of bang to the end yeah of the series for now yeah for now now. and then what are we gonna do (laughs) like with no no more dressed in books end of an era we're getting pretty close we still have like four like we still have skin game yeah short stories about keeping them like yeah, pretty enough far apart because we've been doing it since the start. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. it's crazy. That's so, like three years. Yeah, or something two and so a half. So we we got some whatever. time. Yeah, we, we got, got some time. time. We got some time. But yeah, maybe by yeah. then there'll be another book out. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Never know. Yeah, because last thing we heard is that he had just finished a. Yep, he's he working had just on finished it. the new book. He's, he's working on it. Yeah, be cool. Um. Okay, so peace talks. And Battleground, obviously, we're going to talk about this more, like, on the podcast. We haven't, yeah. we haven't been able to talk about it yet. Um, any, like, specific moments? Like, I know for me in Peace Talks specifically, it was when Ebenezer let loose in the parking garage. Yep. And they're fighting, I yep. think, ghouls? No, they're fighting corner hounds. Corner hounds, yeah. that's what it is, yeah. Um, and, uh, and Ebenezer is just like letting loose. Gravity magic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. First time we really see that. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. They, they do the ring of fire in there. That's right. And it's, it's funny because Ebenezer is so like, this is after Thomas already gets, you know, Thomas did what he did and we, mm-hmm. had, we know that he's stuck and everybody knows he's stuck and Ebenezer knows that Harry's good friends with Thomas doesn't know quite yet that he's his brother. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Ebenezer just keeps taunting him like this is you know after they finish that fight they're like that ah, Hoss we did it without any vampires like, it's all good, <laughs> um, but yeah he just Harry there's just this like nuisance going on like mm-hmm. from Ebenezer like don't mess with vampires don't mess with vampires don't mess with mm-hmm. vampires and they do that fight and then of course another one which is actually I think in Battleground, uh, the fight before Harry ditches him. On is the it the Harry Ebenezer fight? Yeah. Is that the end of this? One? Okay. Yeah. Then yeah. Then that is like the culmination kind of mm-hmm. of of this feud that they have going on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we we see Ebenezer let loose in here, mm-hmm. and then we see him let loose more in this book. Yeah. And uh, and Harry even uh, doesn't he have a trick? God, I haven't read. I haven't read fire. these in so long. Yeah. Well, no, but Harry has a trick where he like copies himself, right? He's oh yeah, the... no, I've I've read all these. Yeah, yeah. So so he got Molly so to make an illusion to, to make he needed a, a new a new uh, coat right because mm-hmm. he lost his his thing. Yeah. So Molly made him this this spider silk suit and along with it came a ring mm-hmm. and we didn't know what the ring was for until after he dupes Ebenezer. Right. Yeah. Right. But, this, right. but yeah, it's a ring that he puts down mm-hmm. and basically like. You know, it allows him to switch conjures places, himself right? and then just control it manually, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And so he he's on the boat leaving while the conjuration yeah. of him is fighting Ebenezer. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's wild. It's crazy. That's a crazy fight. And yeah, at the end, you know, he Ebenezer kills Harry. Like yeah. He literally, and he's like, "I'm sorry, Hoss. I didn't, I didn't think you'd come at me again." Yeah. And then he gets pissed. He's like, "How you fucking, you know?" He just gets right. so mad. He's like, "How dare you?" Yeah. Yeah, and it's this book where Ramirez. Yeah, Ramirez and the gang they stop him on the road after he yeah. goes. He goes to talk to Lara mm-hmm. about Thomas. That's right. Yeah, and then he's leaving the Wraith Manor, and he gets stopped by uh, the crew, mm-hmm. uh, Ramirez and uh, Yo- Yoshiro. What's Yoshimo. Name? Yoshimo, and Wild Bill, and then there's one mm-hmm. other Chandler. Chandler. Yeah, and uh, they basically say like. Yeah, they just invade his privacy. Like, what have you yeah. been doing? Like, and then Yoshimo does this spell, and like, she's like, "Yeah, he's been with one sexual partner in the last mm-hmm. twenty four hours." And he's like, "What the? You know, I was that is like, such an invasion dude. of like, privacy." Yeah. yeah, super, super mad. Oh man, yeah, I don't. 
I really don't remember peace talks like that well. Yeah, um, I've read it so many times. <laughs> but I do love, I I do love that peace talks and battleground like all take place over like one night. Yeah, this is just like yeah. one like very long. Yeah, night. I always like I just like the way like I was just looking at by the title right peace mm-hmm. talks like is the talking mm-hmm. and battlegrounds is the fighting. Yeah, like that's yep. literally how it is. I think it's like perfectly yep. split up yep. that way for sure. And then also in peace talks we see the. Um, at Marcone's place, after they get Thomas out, they're having the you know the former are supposed to show up, right? Mm-hmm. And they show up, uh, with uh, what's her e- name? Ethnio. Ethnio, and yeah. they start killing all Marcone's servants. And uh, there's a moment where Marcone stands up and he's like, "You are in my house," you know, just like yelling and mm-hmm. screaming. Uh, and he's and like, Harry's like, "Damn." Yeah, and he's like, and Corb's like, "Come here, little mortal. Here's your wear guild," you know, like. Mm-hmm. Here you go. And yeah. then Nab gets swatted like a fly. Yes. Yeah. I forgot Through about like that. Through like six walls. Because Molly, she gets swatted and, Mar- and Marcone's like, Molly, will you go get her, please? Mm-hmm. And and Molly's like, she goes through one room. She's like, what's behind the, the washing machine? And he's like something. He's like, what's behind there? Because yeah. she was like four walls, dude. Yeah. Crazy. That's crazy. That's wild. Um yeah there's that, that's pretty much it for, yeah yeah it's yeah there's there's, this, there's but... a bunch of awesome stuff yeah. in there um what about uh is it in battleground when they get taken by the vampires yes that's like into like another dimension basically yeah well well some of them do uh wild bill gets taken yeah uh yeah it's yoshimo a, yeah so that's there's a fight where Chandler. where uh they meet up with ebenezer at this parking garage <sighs> and uh they hear the horn go off, the, the Jotun horn, the giant's horn, and mm-hmm. they're coming, and Ebenezer has to like do some crazy magic, which I still remember the spell. It's called Glenmyra. Oh, forgot. wow. Yeah. Um, that's cool. And then they leave leave that place, and Tutu you know, is doing reconnaissance, and he finds, he's like, hey, there's some people up here doing some weird stuff, and he's like, what? And they find out it's the Chicago graveyard, right? Mm-hmm. And sure enough, there's Vlad. Yeah, Vlad's son, maybe mm-hmm. it's one of the you know Vlad the Impaler, Dracul, yeah. Dracul, yeah, yeah, along with the Black Court, and uh, yeah, two of their guys. While Bill gets yanked into another dimension, nobody mm-hmm. knows what happens. Yeah, could be dead, could be the vampire, could be somewhere else. Yeah, Ramirez gets torn up real bad, mm-hmm. like veins hanging out of his arms and mm-hmm. shit, brutal. Yeah, Mavra gets yeah, it's pretty crazy. Dude, God, that scene, I still. Yeah, it's I, violent. It's, it's like, violent. what is going to happen from that scene? That that scene, I think, like changed a lot more than we realized. Yeah, and, like, so, and that, also that scene, too, that we, we get this more talk on the stars and the stones. Yeah, that's from, uh, right. Yeah, from uh, Injun Joe and yeah. Ebenezer. Or Injun Joe and uh, River Shoulders. This is where Harry's like, you need to tell me yeah, what's going on. Yeah, this is on. after that River Shoulders and Injun Joe, Injun Joe fight off dracul yeah and harry gets back he's like did you win and he's and injun joe's like no there's no winning there's just yeah. surviving against somebody like that right and then he's like yeah you need to tell me and injun joe's like listen i'll give, tell you give one me year. a year yeah yeah give me a year and i can you know he's he says he's like i'm you know who i am i'm not capable of telling you this mm. but give me a year to talk to people interesting yeah. okay yeah i just opened up randomly yeah. to this yeah. page and it's um uh, him putting murphy oh, down yeah he, he, she wasn't heavy but i couldn't carry her and do what we'd set out to do i put her down on the shield as gently as i could i composed her as best i could the gray somehow shrunken remains weren't murphy but they deserved more respect more grace than i could offer i put my hand on her head one more time touched her hair one more time then i said okay yep Oh, so sad. God, there's also I, a scene where, after that, Harry goes to Mab, and uh, you know, shortly after he lays her down, it's like, listen, she was a Jotun Slayer, mm-hmm. like, and she's like, yeah. she will be laid to rest, you know, and she even tells her people like, this woman is a hero. Yeah, like, lay them with honors. Right. I was like, that's pretty cool, dude. I still, I think, I honestly, like, no joke. Yeah. I think the reason why I haven't reread oh, battleground dude, yeah, and peace hard. talks you gotta is get because, over th- yeah it's yeah, heartbreaking yeah every time it's heartbreaking it, like it's it's so like when i read that i was devastated for like several days like yeah. i literally couldn't pick the book back yeah, up dude. because like i've i've read these books since i was like 19 yep. 
And I'm just like, dude, this character that I like grew up with yeah. basically is gone. Yeah. Um, and it's so it's so just heartbreaking. Yeah. But I do, I love, I mean, it's like a good scene. Like, I, I don't want to say it's like my favorite moment, but it's a good, no, it's, it's a like great, a well-written yep, scene. super well-written. And, and yeah. like Harry, Harry like almost killing Rudolph with a yep. shield, like and bringing up a shield. And like having to stop him with the sword. Mm-hmm. You know, the sword passes through him and burns the crap out of him. And yeah, yeah, he stops. And then even uh, Mav later on when they get to the battle, Mav's like, let me see your arm. And she's like, oh, that... That it's not going to heal anytime soon, or yeah. some, something along those lines. Like yeah, she it'll knew be what there. it was. Yeah. yeah, it'll be there a long time. Yeah, uh, and it was because he was being evil. You know, it was right? Like bad. He was doing a bad thing. Right. And that's what that sword does. Right. It is hurt bad things. Yeah. It only it only cuts yeah. those who are like in the wrong, basically. Yep. Um, yeah. And but a, a, another favorite moment of mine is uh, Harry and Marcone on the beach together oh, yeah. kind of broing out after the whole fight yeah like, well don't Marcone, before you say that though we get marcon dies remember his neck his neck gets broken oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 for sure i feel like that's an important piece yeah to say but uh, he's got the he's got coin. the coin yeah so he's, he's, he's thorn, all right thorn yeah. nam shield he's thorn nam shield exactly yeah. yeah oh god but then, that yes, was they a do, twist yeah, it's dude a twist. that was a yeah and, Ooh, that was a good twist. Yeah, they do bro out after the thing, and mm -hmm. and Harry. Er, er, the, He's like, the we were not water. laughing together. Yeah, <laughs> and and then there's another time too. I think it's right after that where, you know, the eyes on the water, and Harry's like, you know, like who's gonna go first? Mm -hmm. Marcon, and Marcon's just like, but yeah, grab he's it. like, you take it. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of cool. Yeah, like, that's like the ultimate. I think it's the it's a super weapon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I loved. Uh, yeah, there was something. There was something they were saying back and forth together, and then Harry's like, "Harry's like, was, I, I said this, Marcone said this. We did not laugh together." Yeah, they were talking. Was Harry like, was talking shit about the the concrete that he. That yes, he put up. that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and Harry's like, why, "Why would you do that? What was the point of that?" He's like, "Well, at least I could conjure the concrete, you know, yeah. or some shit like that." Yeah. They're just you know, being belittled. Right. They're you know, just friends, like, yeah. just talking shit to each other. It was cool. I'm like, I'm like, all right. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, on, I'm so on board with this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, yeah, and I just love, I, I just love all the descriptions of how just insane this night is. Like, it literally feels, do you remember the first time you watched uh, The Purge? yeah movies yeah that's how this book feels yeah it's crazy like no it's it's like yeah this yeah it's like the end of the end of normal mm -hmm. it's like normal's done there's yeah no more, there's no such thing anymore it's like we are going into like epic urban fantasy yeah now. and like, even in the next the the short story after this mm -hmm. whatever that was called i can't remember but uh christmas day christmas day yeah we well no not that the other book that came out the novella that was Jim Butcher actually voiced it himself. Oh, the law. The law. Yeah. yeah. So after that, we're, about that. we're seeing some of the, we well, like we hear about the aftermath of this with the right. the like the, you know, uh, Men in Black. Yeah, those I need like, to reread that. Yeah, it's good. It's good. There's so much. I mean, there's the whole like, like we were just talking about it last night. We've got a wizard. Yeah. We've got a goddamn <laughs> yeah. wizard. Fuck those, those guys. guys. Like yeah, oh what a so great awesome. quote! So like awesome. where they're all in the park together and like all like getting all their people together yep, into one just, place just to form a militia. And like what? Are, and one of the guys like, what do you? What? Why do you lead us? What are you gonna do? He it's throws like, Hold a on. fireball. All right, I'm gonna I'm just gonna show you this once. Yeah. And he gets lightning in his palm, throws it at a tree, but the energy in the air like supercharges mm -hmm. the spell. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I didn't mean to make it that bad, but the tree blew up. Yeah. And, and that's when he's like, fuck! You're like, we got a wizard, guys. Fuck, fuck them, those dude. guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. And I love, uh, like, Sonya le leading his own team yes. and him, like, showing them all how to use their, guns. Their deflate and inflate thing. Do you remember that? <laughs> there was this funny moment where, like... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where Sonya was, like... Harry's, like, you know, what is it called when you, like, get behind him? He's, like, that's inflate. You're thinking of deflate or something. Right, yeah, yeah. And he's, like, inflate the shit out of him, Sonya, or something, <laughs> yeah. something along those lines. Oh, my God, yeah. yes. yeah. Yeah, this book, I mean, it's it's brutal. Like, it's hard for me to say, yeah. like, this was my favorite moment because none of it is, like, 
None of it's pleasant. Good. Like, it's None of it's pleasant. It's brutal it's the whole just way like, yeah. oh my god. It makes you feel a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've had a really hard time like rereading. Yeah. I've this gone back, book. dude. Anytime I get my dress in the urge, uh-huh. I just read Peace Talks and Battleground. Yeah. Yeah. I just I I can't like it's so it's so yeah. heavy. I have to be in like a really particular mood to reread this book just because it's like, dear God. Yeah, I think I like it because it feels like you're reading like six books. Yeah. There's like yeah. Like we said, so much, so much crap going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, like Ethne, who died, the whole battle with Ethne is like amazing. Yep, yeah, and then uh, Justine, and Nemesis. Oh, the reveal that Justine has Nemesis in her. I yep. did not see that coming when I. Yeah, first no, started. I didn't see it coming either. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was that a, was a shock. Well, I mean, I did. Like, you don't until you're on the boat, and then hair, like, hair yeah. starts acting different, and you're like. Oh, oh shit. shit yeah yeah you yeah. get that feeling yep yeah yeah there's a lot of a lot of questions that that come with this book yeah. it's just like oh harry having to marry L- yep. lara after oh one year God. because molly saved his ass mm-hmm. yeah if molly wasn't there she would have been screwed oh my god i'm so excited to see what the next cover will look Me like too, yeah i wonder i wonder what it'll be I bet it'll be like a contemplative Harry. Yeah, like a, that would make sense. Or my thought too would be like, like a, maybe it's like a something on the island, like green behind him, like yeah. Thomas is down there. Oh, something like yeah. That. I like, wonder if like he'll green, be on the island. Light. I don't yeah. know. I don't because that's where that's where he ends up. I think. Uh, well, that's at the uh, end of this. No, not at the en- very end. Oh, at the oh. end, they're in Marcone's castle. But the last big thing that happens is he's on taking Justine the island. That's and he right. Recognizes that she's nemesis, and he dives off, and then the island comes and saves him and pulls him. Yeah. yeah so does he does he dive off or does she dive off oh um i yeah i guess it could be either way my memory could be wrong i thought that he dives off and then like the or yeah i thought that he dives off and the island comes and grabs him that's my what i thought i could that be wrong though be maybe it. maybe she dives off and the island comes to try and get her yeah but either way i think harry gets in the water and the island saves him yeah 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 yeah, it should be at the very or a little bit before the end. I'd like to know if you can find it. I don't. There, there's the problem is there's so much that happens. I know. At I know. The I, end. know I know. I gotta just know for myself though. Sure. <laughs> yeah. The I think the the end of Battleground is one of the biggest epilogues we get throughout yeah. the entire series. There's just like thing after thing after thing after thing that has to be wrapped up. Um. And it's pretty, it's pretty extensive. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Okay. So this is the, this is after he confronts her. He knows what's going on. They're they've already talked a little bit. He says, "Must suck." I I panted to get whipped by some stupid punk from Chicago because it looks to me like I beat you. Something ugly went through her voice. There was never a victory for you to gain. Nemesis hissed. The mortals have been given terror they have not known in centuries. There's nothing more that need to be done. They are your death stroke. Now I need to only wait. I finally reached the back of the bun. I said, funny you should mention waiting. Justine tilted her head too far, silent. You know how you know how you don't want to arrive on Demon Reach, Walker? The rear railing hit the back of my thighs. You don't want to show up all on all on your lonesome. Alfred hates that. That would be like sprinting into a meat grinder. Mm. The gathering light showed me Justine's face as your eyes widened. She whipped her head over her shoulder. The black mass of Demon Reach, backlit by the golden sky, loomed directly ahead of us, swiftly larger as the boat chugged towards the shores. Justine whirled back and lunged toward me. No! I smirked at her, spread my arms, and fell over the back of the boat into uh. the freezing waters of Lake Michigan. With the last shreds of my will, I called the demon reach. And the last thing I felt before things went black was a green gold light and a huge stony hand clamping down on my shoulder, tearing me away from the outsider's desperate grasp. Dang. Yeah. So I wonder, was he not able to tell demon reach... To like go grab her? She was on the boat, couldn't. Oh. Yeah. It's not his purview. Just right. the water around the thing. So that's why he knew, like, he's like, if I can get into the water, I know I can get away from her. Yeah. Yeah. I think he should have tried pushing her into the water. So. Could have worked. Although it's Nemesis. Yeah. So, you know, they're kind of like strong. super strong, super all powerful. Yeah. You don't really know what they know. But he got the best of her. Yeah. You know, for yeah. sure. I do he love that. Fucking tricked her. It's awesome. Well, yeah, that is we've we've been here for <laughs> two over, hours, over baby. two hours, yep. yeah, and uh, we've gone through every single book. That's I'm awesome. sure 
I'm sure that there are moments that we Tons forgot about. Missed. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. But I I enjoyed this because yeah. if if there's anything that this week has reminded me of, like I said earlier, is just that there's amazing moments from all across the series like it's it's one of those rare series where there's not really a bad book even though i make jokes about like ghost story yeah they're slower books maybe yeah they're slower books but they're not bad yeah um and you know just even even going back to the beginning books that are some of uh you know you people people say and and I I'm often one of them saying this as well that like oh the early books like you just kind of got to get through them and they get good at like yep. book five but if there's anything I've realized this past week it's like no they're like really yeah. good right from the beginning yep. like even Stormfront is a really really good yep. book um, and so it's kind of a I mean there I definitely like have my favorites oh for sure but it's one of those series that's very difficult to rank yeah. especially if you've just read the book yeah it kind of feels like wait this is my favorite book wait this is totally. my favorite every book. single book you could yeah. probably say that yeah. yeah and i think i think the thing with the older books right mm-hmm. or the, the the first couple books is like you know we've been spoiled with these right yeah and so it's like you know these obviously like jim butcher like ups the ante every, almost every time like there's more there's more lore that we learn there's more like people that we know there's more stuff so it gets better, right? Mm-hmm. It gets more like involved. But going back to the beginning is still cool because it's like there's Harry. Yeah, you know that's it. There's yeah. Harry figuring stuff out all over again. Yeah, uh, before he met people or before he knows, you know, the wolves or whatever. It's like yeah. this is kind of like where you know where he started. Yeah, and, and Jim Butcher does a good job of keeping the DNA yeah. from the early books while also evolving totally. it. Totally. Yep. Like you, you go back to Stormfront and it still feels. Like, it doesn't feel like, oh, man, I can't believe this is what Dresden Files Files used to be. It feels like a Dresden Dresden Files Files book. book. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, amazing, amazing series. Obviously, it's it's like our favorite series. That's why we got a freaking tattoo of it. Yeah, dude, this is what started this whole thing. (laughs) I wouldn't wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the Dresden Files. Right? There's no doubt about that. Like, he literally is the, you know, the start of all this. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Shout out to uh, to a great legacy yep. of books. Um, I would love to chat with Jim Butcher someday. Yep. It's like my... We're your biggest fans. Come on yes, over. Yes, come on real. over. Our dream guest. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we will uh, we'll see you guys in the episode where we do a skin game. That's coming up. I, I kind of want to do it within like the next month, I think. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, get some skin game in there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, other upcoming episodes, I'm not really sure. Um, I think this episode is going to come out pretty soon here. And then our Words of Radiance episode will be posted probably after that. So yeah. keep keep an eye out for, uh, for Words of Radiance, um, as well as probably our next Harry Potter episode will be coming out pretty soon. Um, so lots of, lots of good stuff on the way. And then December, either 21st or 22nd will be our big end of the year, uh, episode where we talk about, uh, our top five favorite books of the year, top five favorite movies and TV shows and top five games, as well as our biggest disappointments of the year, um, as well as, a number of honorable mentions yeah. and, and whatnot. So stay tuned for that. That'll be a big live stream. Um, we actually have the capability to uh, to live stream for the first time this year now that we're uh, on StreamYard. So um, this mic is tired and it <laughs> wants to go to if, bed. If you guys see, uh, it'll just slowly <laughs> yeah. fall further and further down. <laughs> exactly. This yep. is as tight as it can get. Bro. Yeah. We're yeah. doing our best here. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us while we go through the Dresden Files series. Um, if you know, if you love this series as much as we do, then comment down below and let us know what some of your favorite yeah, moments definitely. from the series definitely. are. It'd be really interesting if you guys had uh, different ones yep. than than we had, and we'd love to talk to you guys down there. Um, as always, all our links are down in the description. Uh, Twitter. Um, 
Discord, Patreon, where you can watch these episodes live as we record them and hang out with us in the chat. Uh, this one we didn't do live, but all of our other podcast yeah, episodes we do. Yeah, 99% of them are. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, definitely catch us over there, and thank you so much for hanging out with us, and we will see you next time uh, on the Fantasy Files podcast. Bye-bye. And a big shout-out to Caitlin. Thank you so much for backing us at the Green Bone Tier.